Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for Below Grade Level. Try to have fun. You can always count on me, and I can count on you. Good times, bad times in between, but friends will see me through. We'll be sharing wonderful times every day. Welcome to Below Grade Level, the show where we read the books from your childhood and ruin them. I'm one of your hosts, Chris Zaleski, and with me as always is Jonathan Eaton. Hi. And Becca Eaton. Hello. Today we have a very special guest. It is Becca's sister, Angela. Hi. Hi. How's it going? All the way from Boston. The same. <laughs> We keep doing that. We're like, how's it going? And everyone's like, eh. <laughs> hey, it's new to me. So. No, it's, it's good. How, how are you doing? How's it going there? Um, it's going well. I have been going to work every day like normal. So um, it's pretty much the same. Um, but, you know, it's getting cold here already. Everybody has their, like, pretty coats out now. So we have that one, like, month in Boston where... The weather is cold enough that you wear, like, really cool, like, good-looking coats. And then a month later, everyone just looks like the Michelin man. Um, (laughs) I was just going to say they switch to their Gore-Tex. Yeah. No, that's new. That starts in November. Um, You basically just wear a sleeping bag around all this. this So this is, like, a really nice time of year. Um, Yeah. You're, like, in prime, like, Han Solo season where every girl's wearing vests and boots. Uh, Vests and boots was last week. So now we're on to <laughs> denim jackets and black leggings and white sneakers. What interesting huh. Boston seasons. <laughs> <laughs> I have a coworker who just went to New England, I think last week for vacation. And she was like, uh, like we're going specifically to see like, you know, leaves change. I'm like, yay, this is probably the best time. Yeah. And then when she came back, uh, it's funny because Angie, you live in Boston and Chris lived in Vermont for a year and a half. Yeah, like ten years ago. Ten years ago, and uh, and it, whenever people like go to New England and come back, they're like, "I want to move there." I'm like, I always say, <laughs> "Well, my <laughs> friend Chris says you shouldn't." <laughs> to Vermont or to Boston? I like, I don't know exactly where she went, but it was just oh, like New England, general New England. Yeah, well, my brother did the same thing. He went to Maine, and he's like, "We're gonna move there." And then Chris is like, "Don't do, it. don't do." Oh my god! <laughs> Every time I leave the city, I'm like, ugh. Just too much. Out there. I want to come back here where there's people awake all the time. Yeah, when we were in Vermont, it felt like we were in um fuck, what was that show? Northern Exposure. Yeah, yeah like the show <laughs> in the, the tiny, 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 tiny town, town in Alaska. Yeah. And it just was it's creepy. <laughs> it is. There's there's not enough of anything. I like Even though Boston. I lived in the third largest city of that state, oh, it God. was quite small. Yeah. Well Boston's was a different story. Uh, Barry. Barry is a city? Yep, Barry City. Ah. B A R R E. No, and they I know that. It's Scary Barry. That's clever. Kind of the same. And, uh, like, they're like, and like my coworkers would be like, you're really living there? And it's like, do, do you know where I'm from? <laughs> I'm from where they shot the wire. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm from Baltimore. This is kind of nice. And then I lived In there Vermont, for I'm hard. <laughs> and then I lived there for almost two years, and it was just like, this place sucks. Yeah. Yeah, you went up there, and like the first six months, you're like, it's gorgeous, and I love it. And then, yeah, at a certain point, you're like, I hate it, and I want to come back. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, but Boston itself, like the city, is different. Like, um, so I was driving down Sturrow Drive today, which is just just around the Charles River, and like all the leaves were changing, and like the water was like this really deep blue, and the sky was like, and I was like, this is a gorgeous mm-hmm. city. Like, I can see people like coming, like coming in and being like, yeah, I could live here. And then you live here, and then you live with people who live in Boston and it's really <laughs> not as fun anymore. <laughs> but, um, I mean, well, I, after I, you had to make literal tunnels through the snow yeah. on the sidewalk to walk to work, I think that mm-hmm. was the nail in the coffin for me ever thinking about going up there. Oh my God, I forgot about that. <laughs> I don't that think I nuts. even had snow boots yet. I think I had just like rain boots from Target. Uh, so bad. And then like, like sometimes the boots aren't enough. No, God. Like sometimes you need yak tracks. 
Yep. I don't have those, so I just fall. Yep. Um, <laughs> but then if you don't have snow boots high enough, then the snow falls into the Gets boots. In and the then boots, it's just, yeah. there's no point. Yeah. Like, oh, God. I forgot so about I, that. I've been in denial. It's been such a lovely summer. So I've, um, I've had that happen here. And it's bad enough. I can't even imagine like where it actually snows. Where yeah. you get like real oh, snow. No. It's October in 2020. In case someone's listening oh, in yeah. the future. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I moved back to Baltimore in February of 2019, and I've yet to shovel a single shovel full of snow, That's and it's true. great. We had a very mild winter last year. Mm-hmm. But enough about the weather. We're going to talk about. (laughs) Uh, We're about to get into the second Babysitters Club book, Claudia and the Phantom Phone Calls. Um, And what's your uh, what's your history of the Babysitters Club? Did you read these? I believe I've read all of them. Um, And the only one I remember like very vividly is that one where they. It was like one of the special seasonal ones, and they went like on a ski trip. But then it was like scary, <gasps> and then like I feel like I, I still have, have kind of nightmares about awesome. it. Oh my god, that sounds <laughs> awesome! No, I think it's, I have that book. You must. I don't know. It's one of the big, the big like thicker ones. Like yeah. Ooh. But it's um. I, I do remember that. But yeah, uh, like a we uh, event. we read all of them. Becca and I tried to start a babysitters club, <laughs> but we weren't allowed to babysit, so we didn't get any jobs <laughs> yeah which uh now i know which babysitter uh babysitters uh, becca um uh, what's the word i'm looking for um relates to the yeah. most yeah. uh which babysitter are you um i think i'm for sure christy now i i definitely always thought i was marianne <laughs> i definitely was marianne when i was in school i was very quiet and like nerdy and whatever um i'm still those things but i'm definitely christy now um, cause mm-hmm. I really just have to be involved in like literally everything I do now. And, um, I do remember like reading when I was younger, reading about how like Christy was so short. She was only like five feet tall, but I thought that was tall. <laughs> so like <laughs> when I got to five feet tall, I was like, yes. And then I like just stayed there. You're like I made it. <laughs> <laughs> I made it to Christy's height <laughs> and no further. <laughs> no further. <laughs> um, so yeah, every time they like mention her height now, I get it. Like, so I thought growing up, I always thought you liked Claudia the best. I did like Claudia the mm. best, but I think I was Marianne. Gotcha. Um, but I like admired Claudia. She was like the opposite of me. There's like the she babysitter that funky. like you know you are, and the babysitter you want to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the babysitter everyone wants to be is Claudia. She's the coolest. She's one. she is the coolest. She she's very fashionable. Yeah, and, and she's artistic. She's creative. Yeah. Have you guys seen the show yet? We watched the first episode. Okay. Um, we didn't watch anything else because we realized that each episode is each book. Yes. So episode number two is what we're about to read. So we're like, oh, we can't spoil it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so we didn't watch it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, we Claudia is like super cool in the in the show, too. Yeah. We love the show. We uh, The oh. last episode we did was, uh, was us watching like the first episode, episode and then like yeah doing a little mini episode of and like then just talking making about the it. whole episode about alicia silverstone and, yeah oh my god all three of us gushing over amazing. alicia silverstone she was so good <laughs> oh my god it gets and um the guy who plays watson i love him yeah he's great he was like, on some show i used to watch and oh, he's so cute but, he's really good in the show um yeah. i don't like i i didn't like love watson in the book um yeah. i think i was on Christy side a little bit and we were like what? Oh, damn Watson he was so, he never did anything wrong he <laughs> yeah, was just but... trying to be a part of her family a little too much if you Team ask Watson. Me. <laughs> <laughs> well I always uh, thought Watson was this like old stuffy like stockbroker type guy yeah that's like, kind of how I pictured him because in the his book, name's too. Watson yeah his name yes. is Watson <laughs> and he's Not a tree in his living room Mark Feuerstein awesome. which is <laughs> different than i pictured but yeah now i'm team watson all the way he's awesome yeah. <laughs> um so Ange, what's your real life babysitting experience yes. because i i remember one time me and you babysat yeah that one time that, that one was time it. was yeah, there was any it. other times for you <laughs> okay i didn't think nope. so <laughs> nope not since oh, that boy. um yeah just our cousin that one time uh yeah our cousins and they kicked us in the shins i remember that <laughs> J- Jimmy and I remember, Jordan. yeah, Jimmy and Jordan, I remember yeah. almost getting stuck in like a Power Wheels, but Ange was small enough she could fit in it. <laughs> yes. 
I could not fit in, and I was jealous. I can still fit in a Power Wheels. There was a, <laughs> there was a bar that we well, went yeah, you're to, Christy like height. yeah, exactly. So <laughs> there was a bar we went to in Boston like two years ago, like randomly, just it was the middle of the day because it was um, right after a Ravens game. We watched those downtown um, at a Ravens bar. So if you guys ever come up when there's not a pandemic, you can all go. <laughs> um, but one, we were just wandering minute. around afterwards, and this bar was like, "Hey, do you guys want to come in and like we'll give you like." Ten free dollars to try the new menu, and then like also we have a Power Wheels. So what? we were like pretty what? drunk after the Ravens game, like had another cocktail, and then I was driving around a little Power Wheels in the bar. It was awesome. <laughs> That's amazing. That sounds amazing, and it sounds like oh, like a real like lawsuit magnet. Yeah, <laughs> like, a drunk person in a Power Wheels in a bar, like. <laughs> well, considering Urban Axes is a thing. That's true. Like a yeah, bar plus hatchets. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, all right. I never found it again, so it may not exist anymore. Or Maybe it may it not have existed. Yeah. I might have imagined the whole thing. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Maybe they got sued after a Power Wheels accident and they had to close. <laughs> after I kept crashing into people's chairs because I couldn't control it. <laughs> Just like running over everyone's feet. Ow. It was a low DUI speed collision. <laughs> yeah. You That's can amazing. see me coming. You can get away. <laughs> pow, pow, Power Wheels. All right. Well, uh... so yeah, not, a, not a babysitter. Cool. So let's let's get right into it then. Um, let's start with chapter one of Claudia and the Phantom Phone Calls. I'll start and we'll we'll go from there. Chapter one. The evening was gloomy and windy, with rain streaming down from the heavy clouds that blocked the moon. Ooh, it's spooky already. I thought it was the perfect night to A, curl up with the Phantom of Pine Hill, a really spooky Nancy Drew mystery. And the licorice whips I'd hidden in my desk or in hidden in my desk or B. Oh, okay. It was a perfect night to do that. Or B, work on the still life I'd started and daydream about Trevor Sandborn. Ooh, <laughs> hot name. But no, my dad said. Homework first, Claudia. And there's no arguing with dad. Besides, we have an agreement. My parents and I. The agreement is that if I get all my homework done every night with someone in my family supervising me, because I can't be trusted, oh I can continue to take my art classes. More important, I can stay in the Babysitter's Club. The Babysitter's Club is something my friend Christy Thomas thought up a little while oh, ago. Oh, this is going to be in every book. At the beginning of seventh yeah, grade. It's going to do a rundown yeah. of if what it even is. If you're just joining us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I Christy. will say, though, I never was a babysitter, but I did tutor, and I literally had to do that. That was my job 90% of the time was to sit and watch someone do their homework because they wouldn't do it if someone wasn't there. <laughs> and it was like... Oh, it's so boring. You can never... You can't understand that level of patience. Oh, God. No, I can't. No. I really I don't can't. want to understand that level yeah. of patience. There's no, no, no. no. Uh, so I feel for Janine right now. <laughs> uh, Christy, who lives across the street from me, does a lot of babysitting. So do I, Claudia Kishi, and so does Christy's best friend, Marianne Spear, who lives next door to Christy's. So Christy, also also across the street from me. So Christy has this idea that the three of us should get together to form a group of babysitters, advertise ourselves, you know, just like happened in the last book. Uh, oh no. It's like blocking the words. What? I don't know. Here. I here, see here. all of oh, it. Did you fuck it up? No, it's oh, just blocking it's, the it's, words. It's the uh, screen share. <laughs> okay. And have uh, blah, 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 we did. <laughs> Plus, we asked a new friend of mine, Stacy McGill, to join, which she did. The Babysitter's Club is working really well. People know about us and call us all the time, and each of us has more jobs now than before the Babysitter's Club, so it was important that I be allowed to stay in it. But I almost blew it when the school sent a letter home to my parents saying that I wasn't working up to potential and stuff like that. My parents are used to those letters. They get them about twice a year. But what they hadn't expected to find out was that I had done almost none of my homework since school started. Jesus. That was when mom and dad laid down the law. I am 100% Claudia. <laughs> oh my god. God. Uh... You are. I am. Yeah. The thing about homework is that it is just so boring I can barely concentrate on Oof, it. And preach. it's useless. <laughs> Who cares whether left facing carrot means greater than or less than or what X equals? Besides, why bother finding out since X equals something different every time? God. Uh, 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 oh my God. Do you understand the concept of math? She fucking needs a tutor. 
I think Seriously? I might be Claudia. <laughs> <laughs> what she needs to do is get out of school. <laughs> the only school thing I like to do is read, and the teachers even take the fun out of that. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> and I think Ange would agree, too, because I remember always getting yelled at for reading ahead. And then you just have to stop and sit there and, like, stare at the wall. Oh, yeah, I do remember. I forgot about that. Yeah. Like, let me fucking read. I'm bored. Yeah, you guys I... read faster. Yeah, yeah, I can't help it that the rest of the class is idiots. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, school's dumb. I've already <laughs> finished this page. <laughs> <laughs> They don't care that I can almost always solve a mystery before the detective in the story can. Oh, before Nancy Drew can, you fucking genius. They just care that I don't know what an adverb is. Oh, that was easy. Even I know that one, Claudia. <laughs> None of this would be so bad if it weren't for Janine. Janine is my sister. She's 15 and a real and true genius. <clears throat> Excuse me. Her IQ is 196, which is above average, 100. And... <laughs> Above, above ad, average, 120. Sorry, this is hard to read because it's weird. Because their fucking I, grammar is terrible. I went back a page by accident. There we go. Well, she fu- doesn't do her fucking homework. <laughs> I feel attacked. She doesn't know what an adverb is. Yeah. And even above the genius level, which is about 150. Actually, I'll tell you a secret. My IQ is also above average. Everyone is amazed since I can barely spell. <laughs> That's why my parents and teachers come down so hard on me. I'm smart, but I'm not a good student. They say if I just pay attention and concentrate, I could do fine in school. But who cares? I'd never live up to Janine. She needs you- like an IEP. Like, it sounds like she has like... Some sort of like dyslexia or something. If she's like learning that disability. Much. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry. This is a book. <laughs> I mean, if she can't talk, maybe she has ADD or she something. She probably yeah. does. Yeah. She's a matter all. Um, you have no idea what it's like to have a genius for an older sister, unless, of course, you have one yourself. You can't even Becca say that. Becca knows the... what that's like. <laughs> um, uh, excuse me. I am the older. That's true. I am the elder twin. Ha! You can't even say the simplest thing, blah, blah, blah. Okay, yeah, the screen sharing thing's fucking it up. Oh, at the bottom? At the top. Yeah. Oh. Uh, uh, I can... Okay. The simplest okay. thing to her. Ah. Yesterday morning, all I did was go, Janine, it's cold out. Mom wants you to close your window before you leave for school. And you know what she said? She said... I find it fascinating that in our society, we attempt to regulate the temperature of our environment rather than our bodies. Ugh. It's so much more difficult and it's highly inefficient. Primitive peoples and peoples in various other societies existing today tend toward the mere addition or removal of clothing when we invite the use of heating units and air conditioning. Ugh. What is she She's like, she didn't say that. She said, close your fucking window. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I didn't even know there was such a word as Okay. Because I'm a dumb bitch. <laughs> like, okay. Like, losing sympathy for you really fast. You're swinging too hard in the other direction, Claudia. <laughs> anyway, to get back to that gloomy evening, Dad said I had to do my homework, and he said it was Mimi's turn to help me. I'm supposed to try to do the work on my own, but one of them sits next to me to keep me from daydreaming, to make sure I do each assignment completely, to see that I follow directions and stuff, and to answer questions if I have them. They're not supposed to do the homework for me, but sometimes I can get Janine to give me answers. This is because my dumb homework is so boring for her, as she tells me at least twice every time she has to help me that she'll do anything to speed it along. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm not up to trigonomulus or whatever it is she does. We can't all be Trigonomulus? What? (laughs) Trigonomulus. How old is she? She's like 12, Uh, right? It's like seventh grade. Okay. Uh, Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like 12. Whatever age seventh graders are now, I don't know. (laughs) Mimi, my grandmother, is the best person to help me. She's quiet and soft-spoken and endlessly patient. My family is Japanese, and Mimi and my grandfather, who died long before I was born, brought my mother to the United States when mom was just a little girl. Mom has no accent whatsoever. Neither does my father, who also came to the United States as a small child. But Mimi has this pleasant rolling accent that I will not try to... No... Thank imitate you. i was that already glad a ship at sea. <laughs> i was already glad like that she mentioned specifically that her parents don't have accents i'm like oh thank god <laughs> <laughs> and she is polite 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 never speaking a harsh word i got out my social studies text 
What do we have between the covers of this book, asked Mimi, who thinks books are eyes into the hearts and lives of other people. Peoples? She told me so once. <laughs> Social studies, I replied. We read chapter three in class today. Now we have to answer the discussion questions at the end of the chapter. Mimi, if they're discussion questions, why aren't we discussing them? How come Mr. Miller is making us write them down? Good point. I do not know, my Claudia, but if that is the assignment, then you must complete it as your teacher wishes. I know. Boy, did I know. A few weeks ago, I would have written down one-word answers or skipped the assignment altogether. Now, there was no way out. I began to write. Mimi looked on, every now and then pointing out a misspelled word or suggesting that I check my punctuation. After social studies came math, then English, and at last I was done. I breathed the sigh that was mixed with that was relief mixed with boredom. Wait, so even Mimi knows, like, she's like a, how, how she just came from overseas, or I forget, but she knows, like, the grandma. She's been there for a language. while. She's been okay. there, yeah. But she's, like, really old, right? I yeah. I think so, yeah. Okay. okay. Sorry. <laughs> she's like, bitch, put a comma there. Right? <laughs> she's like, learn your words. I did. That's a comma place. <laughs> What are you going to do now, my Claudia? asked Mimi. Get back to the Phantom of Pine Hill, I replied, slapping my English text closed. Mimi knows about my Nancy Drew books, but no one else in the family does. Mom and Dad would tell me to read something more grown up, and Janine would tell me to read something more worthwhile. Her idea of a really good book is something to curl up with in front of a fire is sources of American social tradition, which at the very moment she's devouring as if she were never going to read again. <laughs> This sounds kind of cool. <laughs> I was really I, hoping it was Brothers Karamazov. Oh my god, that would be amazing. <laughs> War and peace. It's a good one. And what is happening in the Phantom of Pine Hill, asked Mimi. Oh, it's really spooky, I began. You like to be scared, my Claudia? This sounds... She mean. said ominously. Ooh. My Claudia. <laughs> this sounds like a bad Tinder date. Oh, oh god. god. <laughs> you like to be scared. Um, okay, so this is Claudia. I'm gonna, yeah, so I'll do Riff Raff. Well, yes, I guess so. I mean, when it's just a book, it's fun. Look outside, Mimi. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the wind blowing the trees and the lightning flashing. It's the perfect night to read a mystery. Mimi smiled. Spooky. <laughs> it is almost Halloween, she remarked. Just a few more weeks. It is almost oh, Halloween. It is. Really good timing. Uh -huh. I nodded. But I think I'm too old to go trick or treating. Well then, you can dress up and help us hand out the candy. I'm sure this is almost as much fun as tricks and treats. Mimi knows how much I like to dress up. It's very important to me. I think clothes make a statement about the person inside of them. Also, since you have to get dressed every day, why not, li why not at least make it fun? <laughs> Traditional clothes look boring and are boring to put on, so I never wear them. <laughs> I good. like bright colors and big patterns and funny touches, such as earrings made from feathers or oh blossom God, I love hats. Claudia's outfit. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you know there used to be a Tumblr that was, what is Claudia wearing or something? <gasps> that's no, awesome. That's amazing. And I want to find it. <clears throat> Maybe this is because I'm an artist. I don't know. Today, for instance, I'm wearing, let's find out, purple pants that stop just below my knees and are held up with suspenders, white tights with clocks on them. What the f what? what? A purple plaid shirt with a matching hat, my high top sneakers, and lobster earrings. I, I want somebody to draw what she's wearing. No, I think I, that's I, what the Tumblr does. Oh, oh my God. I will 100% draw what she's wearing. Please. Clock tights. Clock <laughs> tights. Clothes like these are my trademark. Trademark, Claudia. I like costumes too. And I'm, and I'm really, and I'm really miss being able, what did Claudia write this? I really miss being able to show off one this year. Ugh, it's like she's in the pandemic. Yeah. <sighs> But wait, I'm stuck on purple plaid shirt with matching hat. She has a purple plaid hat. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. Go on. That's insane. Um, I imagine it's, it's a floppy hat. It has if this to be. Was, it's got to be a bucket hat. Oh, like a bucket hat? Yeah. You know, those are like in style now for 
kids. Oh, I know. I've been saying that for weeks. That's crazy. My, it my always baby. makes me think of uh, if you steal my sunshine. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Len, my my niece, uh, whose sixteenth birthday is today, um, has a has a bucket hat made out of an IKEA bag, and it's apparently cool. And that sentence makes me feel like I'm a thousand years old. Wait, it's did she make it or she buy it out of an IKEA? I don't I know. I would think that she bought it, but I, I think... don't know why or where. Well, the, why? Uh, why is it a good I question? Guess from Ikea. Because you're not hip. <laughs> Do they sell them <laughs> yeah. at Ikea? I don't know. Someone look this up. I truly Who knows don't. what these whippersnappers are up to? I've seen a picture of her in it, and my brother was like, that it's a, that's apparently cool. Like, that's a cool thing. I'm just like, fuck. I get it now. I get what people said to us when we were kids. Um, we didn't dress that cool. Though. I wear a Yokiro Taco Bell shirt like every Friday. <laughs> I mean, that sounds really cool. I wish I had it. It would probably like still fit because I wore, wore it like oversized, obviously. Why not? I know I have a picture of you in it, or oh I've seen God. a picture of, of you in it. There has to be a picture. I wore it every week. <laughs> that was when you had like your little bob haircut. Oh God! Oh, that was such a fun time. I think I had platform <laughs> sneaker sandals somehow. That sounds accurate. That sounds Ooh. awesome. And and I wore uh, like XL Space Ghost t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> it was very cool. Super cool. I had a million girlfriends. <laughs> uh, I like costumes too. And I really miss being able to show off one this year. But as Mimi said, I could make one just to, I could make one just to wear when I pass out goodies. You're, you're 12. Go trick or treating. Yeah. You're not too old. Maybe I'll dress this up as a... By, this was written by a 12-year-old, Jonathan. You shouldn't struggle <laughs> as much with simple-ass words. You know me, though. Maybe I'll dress up as a Smurf. Blue makeup would be fun. I stood up. Thanks for helping me, Mimi. I wish you could help me every night. I know, Claudia, but I think it's better to take turns. Some evenings I am busy, and your mother and father like to see your work, too. Sometimes Mimi likes to go out, okay? Sometimes Mimi drinks. Poor <laughs> old bitty. I need my sherry. <laughs> right. So why does Janine have to help me? It's because my homework is so boring and it, words are covered up. It's obnoxious. <clears throat> God damn it. My homework is so boring. Something. <laughs> and... <laughs> One night in a row, even Mimi, and the less often they have to help me, the better for them. What? You don't like your it's, fucking uh, attitude, Claudia. <laughs> work is so boring, no one can stand it for more than one night in a row. Ah. Uh, uh. See, they're like, bored too. But 12-year-old homework isn't that bad. Like, no. it's no, probably it's pretty be. fucking easy. I'm sure it's easy, but it's also like, think about doing a 12-year-old's homework right now and you'd be bored out of your fucking mind. Also, I like to, the like, way they change a... teaching. <laughs> Well, if I had to watch a dumb kid do their homework, That's that true. would be boring. But yeah. like, it's probably That's what I'm it's probably like two pages of like easy math equations. Yeah. it's not like she's writing a twenty page essay like okay, research you paper. Never tutored a twelve year old. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know. So what actually is it? Because so I have it's no kind idea. of a lot. Because like, if you forget algebra, like. It's a lot to remember, <laughs> like history. Like they actually memorize dates and shit. Like Ooh, they fuck that. have to like read like a whole like chapter out of a history book and summarize it. And, I like, mean, like I know what all the stuff. Like it could be out. made up. Like I don't, I don't know any of this history. <laughs> it like, just reminds me of uh, Incredibles too. Googling it, like yeah. Oh. It reminds me of Incredibles too when he's like, and they changed math. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have yeah. you guys seen fucking Japanese multiplication? This is way too much of a tangent to go yes, on. Yes, right I now. have seen that. We're never going to get I into also that. look at Reddit. <laughs> it's insane. I literally, I almost stopped working the other day to run into the other room to show you Japanese multiplication, but like I, I had already killed too much time looking at Japanese. <laughs> it's, it's like black magic. It's crazy. It shouldn't make sense, but it does, and, and uh, my life is not the same. The now. way we did multiplication was fine. I don't, I don't even remember. It worked. I don't remember how to do it now, but I knew it at the <laughs> it time. <works> <laughs> you oh, can do boy. it on paper. It's not that bad. I can't divide, though, at all. I have a calculator in my pocket. It's called a Which phone. they said we'd never have. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Those bastards. Yeah, Those you're idiots. right. They fucking did. Why they did. 
You'll never the, have a calculator like, in your You'll pocket. never have a calculator in your pocket, and you're only going to write in cursive forever. Yeah. Everything Ugh. you ever write will be in cursive. Fast forward I can't to even my, read cursive. Like, mid-20s uh, when I have a computer what? in my pocket that can give me the answer to everything I would ever yeah. ask. I signed my name on my ballot, and I was like, I hope they don't have my signature on file, because they might reject <laughs> this. Because I just went like, Ugh, at the end. It was uh, not. Just match it to the one on your driver's license. Oh, God, I don't even know what that one looks like. Every time it's just a crapshoot. <laughs> oh, it's so funny signing leases with like college kids because they sign in front of me and they're all just like, hey, I don't know cursive, I don't know how to write. And it's just so funny. They all do it. They all make the same joke and it's so cute. Oh, uh, little babies. Little babies. They're such babies. <laughs> I'm going to grab a beer from my beer fridge. It's right here. Okay. I was halfway upstairs when I remembered something. I turned around and ran back down to the first floor. Mimi, I called. Yes, my Claudia. She was settling down in the den with a fat book. I just, I just thought of something. <laughs> Let's work on your portrait. In my art class, we'd been assigned two projects that semester. One was the still life and one was a portrait. Both were to be done in oils. Mimi was the subject of my portrait. Would you mind, I asked. We'll just work for half an hour or so. Sorry, I keep running out of breath because I can't breathe very well. Because allergies. Allergies. That would be fine. Mimi carefully placed a marker in her book. She followed me to my room. Her fat book. Her fat book. (laughs) I know artists are supposed to paint in daylight, but between school and babysitting, I didn't have many daylight hours left over. I had to settle for painting in my room with every light blazing. I posed Mimi in the easy chair, adjusted my easel, and got to work. It was the third time Mimi had sat for me, and the painting was really coming along. Mimi, I said, <laughs> uh, Mimi, I said after a few minutes, tell me about when you were a little girl in Japan. Mimi smiled and began the story I had heard so many times before. She was good at talking without moving around. We were a family very She's much a dr- like this. Couldn't <laughs> <laughs> even see your mouth move. I am, I am not good at that. <laughs> I haven't sat still for more than two seconds. <laughs> I lived with my parents, my older sister, and my grandfather, my father's father. Mimi, I suddenly interrupted. Did you and your sister get along? Oh, yes, replied Mimi. My sister was my friend, my dear friend. We studied together and played together. I followed her everywhere and tried to do something. All the things she did. Yes. (laughs) Chris will tell you. She was very patient with me. Why aren't Janine and I friends, I asked, (laughs) now that I've been reminded what the voice is, (laughs) frowning at the portrait. (sighs) Friends takes work, replied Mimi quietly. To be a good friend, you must spend time with someone. You must talk to her and try to understand her. That is how you became friends with Christy and Marianne and Stacy, the Babysitter's Club. (laughs) I don't think my grandmother knew the name of a single one of my friends. Oh, no, no, no. no. Definitely not. And we live like next door to her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Janine is impossible to talk to, I protested. <laughs> and she never has time for me. Well, hardly ever. She helps me with my homework, but that doesn't count. And what about you? Do you have time for your sister? Not very often. Someday you will be friends, said Mimi. I went back to her portrait and she continued her story. Later, when she had left my room, despite the fact that I'd like to read more about her story, I got the licorice whips out of my desk (laughs) and the Nancy Drew book out from under my mattress where it was hidden, along with a bag of root beer barrels. She has the shittiest candy. What the fuck is she eating? She has a serious sugar addiction. But it's like not even, it's like the cheap shit they sell for like. Yeah, Yeah, like at least some Skittles or something. It's like dollar store candy. Right? (laughs) The Babysitter's Club should raise their rate. Right? I was up to chapter 14 in The Phantom, and it really was pretty exciting. Even so, as I chewed away on the licorice, my thoughts began to wander, and they wandered right to Trevor Sandborn. I lowered the book. Sploosh. Trevor Sandborn <laughs> is the most gorgeous boy in the entire seventh grade. 
at Stony Brook Middle School. <laughs> and he happens to have the most romantic name in the world. Does he? Trevor has jet black hair and dark brooding eyes and freckles on his nose. Ooh. So he looks just like her. Oh, God. Is, is Trevor like the boyfriend from Daria? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, God. He walks through the halls looking serious and deep in thought. And he writes poetry for the literary voice, our school's creative journal. I never dreamed I would fall in love with a poet. The only problem is that Trevor and I don't have any classes together. Oh, God, what a nightmare. (laughs) Wait, what's his name, Trevor? What's his name? Andaria? Travis? Yeah. Trent. 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 Yeah. He probably doesn't even know I'm alive. Ring! The sound of the phone made me jump. I reached for the receiver, wondering if there was just the teeniest chance that Trevor was on the other end. Trevor, who doesn't know who she is. Yes. Um, But has her number. Hello? Hi, Claude, it's me. Hey, Stacy. What are you doing? Thinking about Trevor Sanborn. What are you doing? Oh. Oh. Thinking about Sam Thomas. Oh, Jesus. Sam Thomas is one of Christie's older oh, brothers. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, I was just going to say. Ugh. I and forgot Stacy has... had a thing, yeah. Has an immense crush on him. Personally, I think he's too old for her. He's a freshman in high school. Uh, so he's like 14. And she's 12. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is weird. Immense, immense crush is capitalized also. Oh, yeah. It's a big it's word a, it's for a, Claudia. It's a proper crush. Yeah, where did she, where did she learn that? <laughs> I sighed. Stacy sighed. <sighs> Any babysitter's club call? She asked after a moment. Nope. Really? Really? <laughs> <laughs> really? Really? I can't believe these guys don't want to call them. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. <laughs> the headquarters for the club is my bedroom. This is because I'm the only one of the four of us with a phone in my room. Not only that, I have a private number. The Babysitter's Club meets three times a week in my room, and if people call during a meeting, they can reach all four of us at once, so they're bound to get a sitter immediately. As Christy says, that's the beauty of the club. She really, like, went out on a limb with that. Um, (laughs) Of course, people can call us individually at our homes during other times. Plus, a number of club calls come in on my line when we're not meeting. When this happens, I'm supposed to take down the information about the job, like when it is, how many kids there will be, and other information that's information about the job. Riveting! (laughs) Oh, boy. I'm supposed to offer the job to all the club members before calling the client back with a sitter. I'll admit that a few times I've forgotten to do this and have taken the job myself on the spot because I'm conniving. (laughs) But I didn't think it was very nice of Stacy to imply that I was job hogging, even though I have done that. And she's right to call me out on it. And she Stacey. didn't even call her out on it. <laughs> she it's implied. Just... Stacey, Stacey's... how is Claudia my favorite? She's such a fucking idiot. <laughs> it was those it was wacky those, outfits. It was all those clock tights that she it wore. Was the, it's true. The Stacey sighed again. <sighs> is anything wrong? I asked her. I just wish I knew more people. That's all. You will, Stace. Look. You haven't even been here two months yet. It takes time to make friends. Stacy and her parents had moved to Stony Brook, Connecticut from New York City in August. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, she said, maybe you and I could get together with Christy and Marianne on Saturday. I mean, to do something besides have a club meeting. Are you free Saturday? I'm always free, said Stacy. Oh, come on, you are not. You get lots of babysitting jobs, and you get to go back to New York with your parents all the time. That's not the same as having friends. So, let's do something Saturday, okay? I'll call Christy and Marianne. All right. See you tomorrow, Stace. Bye. Bye. We hung up, and I started. I stared at the window at the rain moodily. It wouldn't be easy finding something Mary Ann's strict father would allow her to do. 
or something. Hang on a second. Oops. What the fuck happened? What have you done? I don't know. Completely changed the formatting. Oh, did I? Yeah. Actually, I did. Oops. Okay, let me go back. <laughs> well, I mean, oh, no, it's it's fine. Oh, yeah, is yeah, yeah. Sound, okay. Is the sound kind of crackly, or is that just me? Might be. I think it's just you. Cool. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm hearing, like, a weird reoccurring noise. <laughs> like, vrrr. Vrrr? No. Yeah. Oh. I'm hearing, like, it sounds like a dishwasher. Mm. Oh. In the headphones. But... I mean, I have my AC rolling. Oh, I wonder oh. if that's my fan, because I don't have an AC. Oh. It could be both. It might be, but it's fine. Yeah. We can um, remove well, room you tone. You know what? Yeah. It's warm up here, and I don't have air conditioning, so. That's that's fair. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> where was I? We hung up and I started out the window at the rain. It wouldn't be easy to find something uh, Marianne's strict father would allow her to do or something Stacy's strict diet would allow her to do. Whatever she the fuck. She can still do stuff. She, she, just she can't... can't do anything. <laughs> Wait, All so she can do Marianne is eat salads. Candy. The only thing Marianne's dad will allow her to do is eat ice cream. Stacy's <laughs> diet will not allow this. How can they ever be friends? It's going to be hard for a diabetic to be friends with a sugar addict. Wow, he really they cuts really, the core of this book. They set yeah. up that drama like right away. <laughs> um, but I was determined that we would get together. I talked to Christine and Marianne in the, in school the next day. I went back to the Phantom of Pine Hill. No, she went back to thinking about Trevor. I went back to masturbating about Trevor Sanborn. Sanborn. Chapter 2! Stacy, Christy, Marianne, and I did get together on Saturday, but we couldn't think of a thing to do for the four of us to do together. Marianne wasn't allowed to ride her bike to the mall. Stacy couldn't eat s'mores or ice cream or anything <laughs> fun. See? So fucking e fuck everything. She s'mores or mall. That's all we came up with. We <clears throat> couldn't eat s'mores. Where do they go eat s'mores? <laughs> to the s'more store. <laughs> Okay, I would fucking go to a s'more store. That should be like the next craze, like after Fro Fro Froyo. It's just like s'more stores. Froyo was so Honey, long Froyo ago. was like Did we skip ten a book? years ago. No, we didn't. It's they found out. Uh, didn't they find out Stacy had diabetes at the very end of the last book? I don't remember. I, I drank I don't a lot. I remember they actually addressed it. I think it they was did. just like Stacy had a secret. Like she was. She said that she was busy, but yeah. then they saw her. But pretty... I don't think it but got explained. What is explained. the book, The Truth About Stacy, about? It's not about her diabetes. I that, oh, that maybe true. Claudia true. knows, but no one else does. Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. it says here she has diabetes and has to control oh. very carefully the amount of sugar she takes in each day. And there was only one movie playing in town, and Christy and I had already seen it. So we sat around in Christie's front yard. Don't we, we have were... some fucking board games? <laughs> or like a soccer ball? We were sprawled. Just play with a fucking kick hit. Play with some Don't you like shit. read a <laughs> tiger beat or something? We were sprawled, <laughs> we were sprawled <laughs> over All... the place, except for Stacy, who is sitting up primly with her legs tucked under her, having diabetes. <laughs> she wanted to look nice in case Sam should come along or poke his head out the door or something. Mary Ann had the latest edition of the Stony Brook News spread open in front of her. Riveting. Seriously? Riveting. Riveting. They are so fucking fun. <laughs> but she wasn't reading it. We were very, very bored. So are we. <laughs> we are fucking bored. <laughs> we could go up in the attic and look through that trunk of antique toys that mom got from grandma's, Chrissy suggested. Okay, I would what? love to do that. I would That's love so to look creepy. at some old shit in an attic. <laughs> That sounds God. amazing. Okay, that no one so else was there. <laughs> Stacy and I rolled our eyes. Even though Chrissy and Marianne are in seventh grade, just like Stacy and I are, they can be very childish. They're not interested in boys or clothes yet, and sometimes they do the weirdest things. Marianne still dresses up her stuffed animals. No judgment. <laughs> and they even look Seriously? younger than we do. <laughs> wait, wait. Oh my god! My rabbit has her Halloween hat on. <laughs> That's adorable. <laughs> and so does my octopus. <laughs> Holy oh, shit. That's so, so I cute. guess I really am Christy. <laughs> yeah. That's a cool octopus. Oh, I Thank put you. a I put a cat um pizza costume on my octopus. 
Oh, yeah. So oh. now the octopus is a pizza. The, the pizza Shakespeare neck? Yeah. It's like a Shakespeare collar, but Shakespeare it's a pizza. Oh, I have those, too. <laughs> yeah. I have great. the peanut the butter and them. jelly ones, too. Yeah, cats uh, hate Pancakes them. wears actually, it for a weirdly long time. Yeah, Like, she's, she's kind of fine with it. Ned actually really likes them. <laughs> like, he just, he's the chillest cat ever. He just, like, walks around with a pizza on his leash outside. And <laughs> he's like a teddy bear. My neighbors bear. don't talk to me. <laughs> Christy has long brown hair, which she doesn't do much with yet, and big brown eyes, which will look great with makeup in a couple of years. She's small for her <laughs> age, Angela. But not right now. She looks more like a 10-year-old. Marianne also has brown eyes and brown hair. Her father makes her wear her hair in braids. I wonder oh, how long so that will creepy. go on. Uh, yeah, I don't like that no, sentence. No, I don't that's like that either. really all. creepy. That's not okay. My little girl's going to wear braids. And both of them wear kind of little girl clothes. <laughs> Kilts and plain blouses and stuff like that. Nothing Kilts? cool like Kilts? clock tights. <laughs> Kilts are fucking cool. Are they Shut in your field face, hockey? Claudia. Are they yeah, in right? Scotland? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, doesn't Marianne play field hockey later on? <laughs> are they Scottish I don't remember. men? I feel like she does. I know. I think Christy plays baseball or softball or something. Christy plays softball. I think Marianne plays Christy hockey. definitely plays softball. Because she has a softball team. Spo- spoiler alert. She has a softball team. <laughs> oh, yeah. Which team does she play for, Chris? She... The lesbians. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Stacy, on the other hand, dresses pretty much the way I do. She's tall and slender. No, she doesn't. And <laughs> she gets her blonde hair She doesn't dress like a fucking cut. lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> Claudia dresses like a combination of Blossom and Clarissa explains it all. And like a clown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like. <clears throat> Gets her blonde hair professionally cut. She looks older than 12. That's not cool either. We could try that new cookie play. No, this is. Marion the began, then glanced at Stacy and stopped, remembering the diet problem. Silently mouthing the word diabetes. <laughs> We could run to move. <laughs> the ghost of Wilford Brimley nods and accepts. <laughs> <laughs> we could run to movie, I said to Stacy. Yeah, said Christy. Yeah, said Marianne. The player's broken, said Stacy. Oh. What? What? What's a movie player? The VCRs in the shop. <laughs> the movie player. I picked up a bright yellow maple leaf and twirled no. the stem between my thumb and forefinger. I'll Power tell you. Hold artistic. on. <laughs> I'll tell you guys a secret, <laughs> I said. Well, Stacy knows about this, but no one else does. <laughs> How come you already told Stacy? asked Christy <laughs> accusingly. <laughs> I just did, that's all. Okay. I saw Christy and Mary Ann glance at each other and knew what they were thinking, that Stacy and I left them out of things. Well, maybe we did sometimes. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> I wish Fuck I had ad libbed that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to know the secret or not? Yes, said Christy grudgingly. Okay. Well, here it is, I said, slowly, trying to drag out the suspense. <laughs> I'm in love. <laughs> oh said Marianne softly. I feel like you Claudia's like Claudia's starting to sound like Snake. Like snake. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Potter. <laughs> you are, cried Christy at the same time. Who wish? asked Marianne. I sighed deeply. Trevor Sandborn. I closed my eyes and leaned against the maple tree. Trevor Sandborn, replied, repeated Christy. Marianne squinted at me through her reading glasses and pushed one braid behind her shoulder. One braid that her dad makes her have. <laughs> she has reading glasses at 12. <laughs> Who's he? Only the most gorgeous boy in school. <laughs> I don't think I've heard of him. Is he in our grade? <laughs> yep. He's a poet. I said, I, I tried to describe him. Oh, good God. Wait, there's no description. Oh, 
That's so boring. I thought <laughs> I tried to do I know. I was emotionally preparing to describe him. Perfect buns. <laughs> oh, exclaimed Christy, right in the middle of my description. That did not happen. I know who you mean. He's really quiet. He's in my math class. He sits in the row behind me, right next to Alan Gray. Oh, you poor thing, I said. Alan Gray. Ick. Uh. Yeah, added Marianne, sounding pretty disgusted. I mean, pretty disgusted for Marianne, which for most people isn't very disgusted at all. See, Marianne lives alone with her father, who yes. is really, really strict and overprotective in a very problematic way that's oh, no. starting to make us all nervous. He's like, wear these braids. Your mother wore them like this. Uh, <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's horrible. Because of him, Marianne is shy and held in, if you know what I mean. No, no I don't, I want don't. To know what you mean. What the fuck does that Please mean? Please elaborate what held oh, in means. Obviously, constipated. <laughs> <laughs> held in? Ugh. Mr. Spear thinks that because Marianne's mother is dead, he has to go overboard with this careful upbringing. Making Marianne super polite and kind of old-fashioned. That's why she'd be like a nice person. That's just um, a strange direction to go in. Because you'd think like, okay, overprotective, keep her safe. But not like, put her in braids and make her be really polite. Yeah. And make her like very childish. Well, like, like, here's, here's my, my Victorian daughter. daughter. Because yeah. Maybe her mom died because she was rude to someone. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I feel like I died I mean, from that. Honestly, <laughs> not like that. That's how I'm going to die. Yeah. <laughs> you it's going to be in a bar fight. You don't say excuse me and someone stabs you. <laughs> it's going to be in a bar fight. <laughs> I've only been in one bar fight and it was very short. No one died. <laughs> I started some. But me anyway. and Chris were almost in a bar fight. Wait, in, in, um, in That was Vermont? a good night. Or in Baltimore. No. In, in, in Baltimore. Hand. It was the, oh, it was the... That was confusing. It was the weeniest... Almost bar fight in the world, and everyone was really drunk. I was in Shocking. two almost bar fights, but it was just men being horrible. Yeah. <laughs> I was I trying to start it, or was I responding? Uh, we all tried to start it. <laughs> the bartender, the bartender, basically like got between you, me, and another guy, and was like, "Everyone, please stop." But that wasn't that. Oh, really uh, was it the guy that called us assholes? Really drunk. Yeah, like it was a guy out of nowhere that was like, "Those guys, like fuck those guys," and you guys were like, "What? Why?" He, he, we were super drunk, and this guy was super drunk. We were at Golden West. This guy came in, tried to like jump up on a stool and slipped and like fell. And, oh, did you laugh at him? And every, yeah, have. and everyone laughed at him because he was <laughs> drunk. But then he like pointed to us and was like, "These assholes." And then me and Chris were like, "Who's that? Who's assholes? Who? Who? Who?" And like we got up in his face and he was like, Jesus. "Nothing." And we're like, "No, you said we're assholes." He's like, "No, I didn't." And then it was just that for like, wow. for, like five minutes. It's all it's all so coming back ass. to me now. Um, <laughs> we were doing like a, a a kill you with kindness thing. Like, yeah, wait, yeah, oh, really God, really I would dumb. like to know. Why I'm an asshole, so I yeah. can oh stop God. being one. Yeah, that's, that's so annoying. Exactly, <laughs> exactly what. what. So mad. <laughs> it was. It was. <laughs> my almost bar fights were cooler than that. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I'm not my... proud of it. No, I wouldn't be at all. Both of mine ended Wait. up in the guy being removed from the bar. Wait, what was the first one? What do you mean being um, from the bar? Like he worked there. Removed? No, like. Oh. Oh. Being like escorted out. Um, the first one you weren't there, it was at Fridays. Uh. Me, Lindsay, and Christina were there. And we were sitting at a booth, and there was this girl in, like, a really fucking short dress that was, like, leaning up on the bar. And there was, she was standing. Uh, I remember and there was a that. guy that was, like, crouched down on the ground looking up her dress, and it was fucking disgusting. Ew! Ew! So I kept saying to him, like, that's fucking disgusting. Stop looking up her dress. He's like literally crouched on the ground with his face up her dress and i was telling him stop that's disgusting and he he like got in my face and kept (laughs) calling me a dyke and was like you'd only know i was looking up her dress if you were looking up her dress and i'm like you're right next to me you're really easy to see you're being disgusting (laughs) and you should stop and then his friends took him outside yeah that's good one time i'm 
And I was, like I said to that girl, like, you might want to not stand like that in a dress that short. (laughs) And she, like, barely even registered that was happening. And I'm like, you're welcome. It's not her fault. She can stand where the fuck she wants. She can, but, like, literally her ass was almost showing. I mean, she can wear and stand however she wants. But if she doesn't want a guy on the floor looking up her fucking dress. Why is he on the floor? He should be upright and standing like a normal human person. I agree. <laughs> okay. I just thought I she mean, should know what was happening. I understand. She should know. Well, I, she didn't um, give a shit. My so. last my last bar fight was was not <laughs> just that phrase. My, my last, last <laughs> bar fight. My it last was, in a long line of them. <laughs> it was um it was pretty stupid. It was on um Halloween and um some girl like took my drink and then took our stools at, at this bar, like, near us. And we had reserved the stools with Dan. Dan was dressed as, um, like, a Ghostbuster, so we had an inflatable backpack on. So she'd <laughs> thrown the backpack, what? like, what? out into the, like, hallway. That's a very dangerous thing to do to a And then took my drink, which is disgusting, and yeah. took our seats. And I was what? like, what? what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Like, you just drank out of my drink? You don't know who I am. Oh, she drank <laughs> out of your drink? Yeah, she just took my drink and started drinking it. It was like a fucking beer, but still. No, <laughs> that's, 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 that's not, not that's no. normal. I know there wasn't a pandemic back then. Look at this fucking asshole. Even <laughs> That's how pandemics start. That is how pandemics yeah. start. A we cat. started the pandemic last Halloween. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it was last year. It's all Boston's well, fault. Well, you know the timeline sorry. matches up. You were dressed <laughs> as a bat. <laughs> not this year look at oh this guy God. just thinks he can just fucking chill like this anyway I'm reading right uh yeah I was just gonna say like wait where, 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 what are we doing oh, I think are we, we're at are we, we're, we're at who's Alan Gray we're being ourselves oh. who's Alan Gray asked Stacy reminding us that she was a newcomer to Stony Brook <laughs> Alan Gray Said Christy Wittering. You don't know. <laughs> the most disgusting boy in this whole solar system. He's been awful <laughs> since kindergarten. Probably since birth. And I can tell you it's no it's picnic having been... Alan sit right in back of me. Yesterday, he told Mr. Peters that I was late for class because I had to go to the doctor for a flea bath. <laughs> That's pretty, <laughs> That's it's pretty solid. Sick, sick bird, Alan. <laughs> He's been awful since kindergarten is a thing I want to say about someone. Like now. Yeah. Oh, you don't Becca, know him? Your been... teacher... <laughs> didn't you have a teacher who wrote you like a hall pass and said you had Lyme disease? What? <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> I feel like well, one of your teachers wrote you like a hall pass to go somewhere and said, like, Becca has left. <laughs> That's so funny. What grade up. was that? Well. Like high school. High school <laughs> it probably know. was. Like, yeah. Oh, that, shit. That sounds like that could happen. Yeah. That's awful. I'd do that <laughs> shit if I was a teacher. Me too. Yeah, right? I know. He really hates me. He doesn't bother anyone else half as much as he bothers me. Well, you are the only girl who ever fought him back, you know? (gasps) I pointed out. Yeah, said Christy with a grin. A slow smile spread across Marianne's face as she remembered what we were talking about. Even Marianne had thought it was funny. (laughs) What? demanded Stacy, looking frustrated. (laughs) Fifth grade, I began. (laughs) That year, Christy, Marianne, Alan, and I were all in the same class. Christy really got Alan. He'd been tormenting us, all the girls really, for the entire year. And by June, we had had it. So one day, Christy comes to school, and all morning she brags about this fantastic lunch her mother has packed. A chocolate cupcake, Fritos, fruit salad. A ham and cheese sandwich to Hershey Kisses. <laughs> like I don't know why that's the thing that made me laugh the hardest. It's like she's she describing what she ate in Clueless. <laughs> oh, shit. A handful of popcorn. <laughs> Six really, peanut M&Ms. Yes, really exactly. great stuff. Christy says it's a reward for something or other. And she says the lunch is so great. She's got to protect it by keeping it in her desk instead of in the coat room. 
So, of course, Alan steals the bag out of her desk during the morning. That's not then, that good of a lunch. At noon time in oh. the cafeteria, he makes his main okay, okay, no. What the fuck a child says noon time? Noon time. <laughs> if that's a tasty cake, chocolate cupcake, though, I mean. Yeah, that was legit. The sun that was, was awesome. at high noon. <laughs> He's sitting at the boys' table. They're all crowded around, and us girls are looking on from the next table, the girls' table. This. <laughs> Two tables. There are two tables. Two tables. <laughs> one for boys and one for girls. You remember fifth grade, don't you? They're disgusting. Alan is the center of attention, which is just what he wants. And just what I wanted, added Christy. Right. <laughs> so Alan carefully takes all the packages and containers out of the bag and spreads them in front of him. Then he begins to open them in one he finds d- dead spiders. What? <laughs> what dead spiders. Dead spiders. In another, he finds a mud pie. So, shit. Maybe just like, mud? Like, <laughs> was or it just mud. shit? She didn't say David cow Michael pie. had made it for me, said Christy. David Michael is Christy's little brother. He was four then, but still was a businessman. <laughs> <laughs> She'd even wrapped up a sandwich with fake flies stuck on it. So fake flies, but real dead spiders. Real dead spiders. Real dead spiders, but fake flies. God. Flies are harder to catch. Requested, dear <laughs> That's true. Stacy began to giggle. It was great, said Marianne. Everyone was laughing. And Christy had packed a real lunch for herself, which she'd kept in the coat room. What? Was this elementary school? What, what fucking it- coat room? Fifth it's grade? Connecticut. Fifth grade, oh. you have a coat room? Okay, they didn't go to public school in Baltimore. Okay, that's fair. You have to keep remembering that. <laughs> All afternoon, the kids kept telling her how terrific her trick had been. The only bad thing, said Christy, is that ever since, Alan has thought he has to bother me constantly in order to keep up his reputation. He's like the plague. The- <gasps> Ned! Thank goodness Trevor isn't like that, I said. If he was, you wouldn't have fallen in love with him, Stacy pointed yeah. out. She brushed her curly blonde hair out of her eyes. That's true. Poets are sensitive and thoughtful. Aw, oh, Claudia, you'll learn one day. Oh my god, yeah, no, I <laughs> went to college with a million Trevors. Hard pass. <laughs> yeah. You never date a guy that writes for a literary magazine. <laughs> we fell silent. Marianne flipped idly through the Stony Brook News. Taylor's is going to have a sale. I got confused because I thought that was the guy's name, and then I remembered it was Trevor's. Mm. I thought it was Taylor Dozy. Taylor Dozy's is having a sale. I mean, that makes sense. <laughs> I had closed my eyes and was trying to conjure up a picture of Trevor in my mind. Ew, I don't like this. There was a fire at the mall this week. Mm. <laughs> Everyone's supposed to get flu shots by November. Mm. Ah! Christy, Stacy, and I jerked to attention. What is it? What is it? I cried. Marianne had turned pale. With one shaking hand, she pointed at the paper. With the other hand, she held the paper away from her as if it might bite. Is something on the paper? I shrieked. (laughs) I jumped away. I absolutely hate spiders. No, in the paper, Marianne managed to say. Christy grabbed it from her, like the bossy bitch that she is. <laughs> and she and Stacy kneeled on the ground and leaned over the pages Marianne had it opened to. Angry pig goes hog wild? Asked Christy. <laughs> one of the larger headlines. <laughs> oh, cried Marianne. <laughs> Depressed oh, trucker drives self crazy? Asked what? Stacy. What? I, I thought that really... was going to be off a mountain. Uh, that's like, yeah. That's yeah. Off a mountain. <laughs> oh, Becca, you're not that's, reading along. That's, that's <laughs> no, no, way. no way. No. Way. <laughs> no. <laughs> what is it, Marianne? <laughs> Just tell us, I shouted. You're driving us crazy. <laughs> Marianne had calmed down a little. <laughs> she took the paper back and read. Phantom caller on Rampage and Mercer. She cleared her throat and glanced at us. Then she began to read again. The thief, 
whom police have nicknamed the Phantom Caller, struck again in Mercer on Tuesday night. Following the pattern of his previous burglaries, he began making phone calls, this time to the home of Thornton and Sophia Granville of 236 Whitmer Court, shortly after 4 p.m. He never spoke, simply hanging up the phone when someone answered. Um, the Granvilles left their home at 7.30 to attend a meeting of the school board. When they returned at 10.15, they found all of Mrs. Granville's jewelry missing. <clears throat> Nothing else had been taken, despite the fact that a considerable amount of silver, as well as Thornton Granville's Thornton famous and very valuable Greenville. coin collection, were in the house. I'm Thornton Granville. <laughs> Where the fuck do they live? Connecticut. Stars Hollow. Uh, they live in Stars Hollow, I believe this. <laughs> <laughs> this is the sixth home the Phantom Caller has robbed in the past two weeks, and the second home in Mercer. What are you doing? Their first four robberies occurred in New Hope. Marion stopped reading. So what is scary about that? asked Stacy. You should hear what goes on in New York City every day. There is a body on my street <laughs> almost every week. <laughs> Murder. But don't you see, asked Marianne, he's getting closer and closer to Stony Brook, to us. First New Hope, then Mercer. Stony Brook is the nearest town to Mercer. Well, it's still 20 miles away, I said. Does he always steal jewelry? Yes, replied Marianne. Just jewelry. It says in the next paragraph that he really knows what he's looking for. Now here's the scary part. He makes those phone calls to find out whether anyone's home. But sometimes, if the people don't go out, he robs them anyway, and he doesn't, they don't know it until they realize that the jewelry is missing. He's in the house while they're there. He's never hurt anyone. What do you, what do you think he'll do if he met someone face to face in the middle of a burglary? Now think about this, she went on. We don't have, we don't know what kind of jewelry the people we babysit for have. They don't pay us enough. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think that Marianne has, like, a map of, like, the Tri-County area with, like, red string. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't, she doesn't now, but she does next. <laughs> Later, yeah. Soon. Oh, said Stacy. No one around here is as rich as those Granvilles sound. You know, Thornton Granville. But maybe it doesn't matter, said Christy. And what if the Phantom Caller was watching the house or something and saw the parents go out? He might go ahead and rob it if he thought just a babysitter and a couple of little kids were there. I still don't know, said Stacy. I think you guys are worrying about nothing. Suddenly I clapped my hand to my mouth. Oh my gosh. I cried. What? The other shouted. When I babysat for the marshals on Wednesday, the phone rang twice, and each time I answered it, the caller hung up without saying a word. Oh no, you're kidding! I think, said Christy seriously, that we should hold an emergency meeting of the babysitter's club right now! What the fuck are they doing? But, but, right but, right but, now. They're just sitting there but, doing nothing. They're already doing that. Oh, they have to move to the bedroom they for it to be to official. Bedroom. Chapter three. The war room. We are taking our sweet Robert's time sweet getting through this time. Book. Yes, we are. The we members are of the babysitters. <laughs> yeah. The members of the babysitters club gathered numbly in my bedroom. <gasps> this is terrible, moaned Christy. How can we babysit under these conditions? Christy, I got news for you. Life's gonna be pretty rough. <laughs> ah, ah, wait till twenty twenty, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> Nobody said a word. To ease the tension, I took a gigantic chocolate bar out of my notebook, carefully peeled back the wrapper, wrapper and offered and pieces to Christy and Marianne. But not Stacy, because of the well, diabetes. I, I didn't even bother to feel bad that Stacy couldn't eat any. What? The three of us Why chewed in silence. Bitch? So that the eased hell? the tension? I'm pretty sure you just added another layer of tension. Yeah. I think I have a piece of celery for you. <laughs> I mean, they make sugar-free candy. That's what we had to buy for Poppy all the time because he was diabetic. Yeah. yeah. I mean, no. it's probably bad, but Fuck it's Stacey. something. <laughs> Look, said Stacy after a while, I think we're worrying about nothing. The Phantom Caller hasn't even robbed anybody in Stony Brook, so he's still at least 20 miles away. 
It's she, not a fucking hurricane. You can't just like <laughs> trap it. Like, <laughs> <what the fuck? laughs> He's going to make landfall in Stony Brook <laughs> in two days. <laughs> she turned to Marianne. What makes you so sure he'll come here next? Maybe he'll decide that with the police on his tail, he should just clear out and go rob people in Oklahoma. What? That's true, said Marianne slowly. <laughs> <laughs> and who's speaking currently? Uh, Does anyone know? Uh, Stacy, maybe? Sh- sh- sure. And in the second place, if anyone we yes, sit yes, for yes. does have some fantastic piece of jewelry and the phantom caller has heard about it, don't you think we'd have heard about it too? I mean, it wouldn't be any secret then. <clears throat> That's true Do too, you know that, you know that I you said. by everyone on your street? Yeah, don't you? Yeah, we all talk about it. Well, no, if you're in someone else's house alone, you're obligated to we go to the We keep having show. those jewelry parties. <laughs> <laughs> But, well, what if we just happen to be babysitting somewhere and a burglar just happened to try to break in? Not the phantom caller necessarily, but any burglar. It could happen, you know, and we should be prepared. <laughs> I suggest karate. <laughs> I was going to say, are we going to, like, a, an armory montage uh, yeah, where they're say, all, like, grabbing guns and knives? Let's all go to a pawn shop. <laughs> Lots of guns. <laughs> You're right, said Christy. Good babysitters should be prepared for anything, even war. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, this could be so good. <laughs> Maybe, said Stacy. We should arrange a code we could give each other over the phone that would be a signal for the other person to call the police. Let's say I'm babysitting for Jamie Newton and I hear a burglar. Okay, I want to call the police, but I don't want the burglar to hear me calling the police, right? But you don't want the you want the burglar to hear you call anyone? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. No, no, it's uh, at that I point. Just... <clears throat> Right, said the rest of us. So what I do is call Claudia, for example, and I say, hi, it's Stacy, your friend with the diabetes. Have you found my red ribbon? And that's a signal that I'm in trouble and need Claudia to call the police. Hey, that's a neat idea, said Christy. Yeah, said Marianne. But how would Claudia know where you are? How would she know where to send the police? Don't they have a schedule? Yeah, I'm just amazed I've remembered the voices this much. <laughs> I'm impressed. That's right. That's a good question, I said. Because what if the burglar was listening in on an extension, like most burglars do, and they come in the house <laughs> and they pick up the phone, and then they just have to listen really quietly? Um, I couldn't just say, okay, I'll call the police. Where are you? That wouldn't do you any good at all. Is there, like, an echo? I don't hear Oh, there might be. Okay. Ugh, listening on an extension that is so creepy and totally plausible screamed christy <laughs> but it could happen i said it happened in that thriller the night of the weird you know the one where they find the babysitter stop 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 don't say anymore i don't want to know cried christy i am not going to be able to handle 2020 at all <laughs> all right but the point is i said that we should all know where each one of us is sitting and when well, Marianne said, there's the record book. Right? The record book this where we why keep I'm track of our babysitting appointments as well as all other important club information. And you know Marianne's like, like an Excel I wizard would, now. I wish I was editorializing, but this is exactly what it says. It's <laughs> fucking obvious. Christy makes us keep a club notebook, too. Each time we complete a job, we're supposed to write up what happened. And the other club members will know about any problems with kids or their families or homes and know what to expect the next time they sit for the client. I should mention here that each of us holds an office in the Babysitter's Club. Marianne is secretary, which is why she was thinking of the record book. I thought we covered this in the exposition chapter. Oh, the exposition no. never ends. No, the exposition gets <clears throat> sprinkled in. Probably. Yeah. Because <laughs> we don't know what Marianne's wearing right now. We don't know what Chris is wearing right now. That's true. Oh, oh, I forgot they're wearing kilts and blouses. Oh, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Sorry. Braids. Don't forget about the dad braids. And, yeah, the braids that Marianne's father requires. (laughs) Christy is president since the club was her idea and she's the bossiest. 
I'm vice president since the headquarters is in my bedroom and I have a private phone. And Stacy is treasurer since she likes numbers. Not that she's good at math. What about the record book? Asked Stacy. Okay. It's so fucking stupid. <laughs> stupid it's fucking got girls. All of the information in it. Our appointments, the money we've earned, everything. I could bring it into school every day so we could check the calendar. And during our regular Friday afternoon meetings, we could check it for the weekend. That um, way... <laughs> do you think they're going to have a Google Docs on the TV show? Oh, uh, yes. They definitely. have to. Yeah. She's already, like, on the TV show, she's already, like, the social media expert. Yeah, I forgot about that. That way, each of us would be sure to know what the others are doing. Where they're going to be babysitting. That's a good suggestion, said Christy. Except that, as president, I'll take responsibility for the book during school. If anything happens to it, it'll be my fault. You don't have to do that, I said. We could take turns. No, it's easier if the same person always has it. I don't mind. So I move that I should I bring it to school see where this every is going. day. <laughs> me. Mean. Well, you know Alan's no, going to steal me, it. Me, me. Oh, Alan Becca is going to steal it. Be- Becca figured it out before the detective did. Oh, yeah, shit. fuck you, Claudia. I check in the motion, said Marianne, looking relieved. Good, said Christy. Now what about burglar alarms? What about them? I countered, cocking an eyebrow. I think if we're babysitting and anything strange happens, a silent phone call, a funny noise outside, a squirrel, anything... <laughs> We should rig up some kind of burglar alarm so that at least we'd know if someone tried to break into the house. What, are they going to booby like, trap like, the like house? Like, house. like Home Alone, yeah. <laughs> it's like a fucking Home Alone. Yeah, yeah. 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 You need rope and paint cans. Yeah. <laughs> a nail BB board. gun, a nail board, <laughs> some Christmas ornaments, tar. Yeah. <laughs> Several axes. For a moment, nobody spoke because what? At last. <laughs> so this is because that movie didn't exist yet. We were yeah. trying to make sure that yeah. Chrissy hadn't lost her goddamn fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> At last, Mary Ann said, You mean like stacking tin cans in the front of a door so that the door opened, the cans would crash down and alert you? The parents coming home to that are going to think that these kids are fucking crazy. The parents be like, nah, like, hiring you You are again. not responsible yeah. for this. Yeah. <laughs> we have a real fucking burglar alarm. I gave you the code. <laughs> Exactly, cried Christy. That's a good idea. She tore a piece of paper out of my social studies notebook and wrote. Oh, my God. This is getting <laughs> awesome. Oh, Jesus Christ. I fucking love this. Yeah. I love this shit. Number one. This is so fucking dumb. Stack cans in front of door or window. Parentheses. Inside. Keep the change, you filthy yeah, animal. You know, it's like set, it, yeah, you know, it's like set the music of like, dun, 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 dun. Oh my God. God. Jack hands in front of the clear window where they can obviously see it. <laughs> yeah. But, she added, make sure you don't put the stuff where the kids you're sitting for could fall over it. And make sure you put it away before the parents come home. Right, we agreed. Okay, other ideas. Claudia asked Christy. She was beginning to sound like some of my teachers. No, I said crossly, feeling embarrassed. Asking your goddamn opinion? Jesus. <laughs> right? Do you read all the mystery novels? Then yeah, I, you should be the best one at this. Right? <laughs> then I added... She opened the book by saying, I'm dumb. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> we should, you should always listen when somebody tells you who they are. <laughs> 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 then I added, do you have any? Realizing that Christy had been doing a lot of talking and writing and not much thinking. Oh, damn! damn. damn. Oh, damn. <laughs> Shit! There was an awkward silence. Then... Yeah, no shit. An icy one. <laughs> Then, how about a smell alert, said Christy with a giggle. I'm sorry? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Marianne and Stacy laughed, but I thought Christy was sounding pretty childish again. What, I demanded, <laughs> is a smell alert, if I may ask. Christy couldn't stop giggling. You put something really... <laughs> You put something really gross, like garbage, what? outside the house where the burglar's bound to step in it. What? Then when he breaks in, you smell him before you even hear him. A no. smell alert. Okay, Christy's dumber than Claudia. Okay, yeah. Christy, you're a stone-cold idiot. 
fuck? She's been having some real serious turds lately. So like, I, I gotta find a use for these. I'm industrious. I came up with the babysitters club. I had no intention of laughing. A smell alert. All we I, cut the gas line. <laughs> All yeah, I right. said was, you know, a burglar could be a woman. It doesn't have to be a man. Okay, you sound like fucking Janine right now, Claudia. <laughs> Calm your tits. <laughs> Equal opportunity burglars. Uh, doesn't have to be a man either. It could be a... Why else would they go for jewelry? Am I like, right, ladies? <laughs> a werewolf. It's not, it could be a non-binary person. Yes, a non-binary burglar. Oh, Claude, it was a joke, said Christy. Come on. Well, I don't have any ideas. <laughs> All right. I was ready for a number two already. Like, th- this list halted instantly. So was Christy. Shut up. <laughs> Christy can't fucking think of a single idea. Herself. You were so bad before I, I, I even really said mad. it. Because I already knew it was coming. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, keep thinking. Now, I'm going to write out our code words. You guys have to keep these a secret. Keep the whole page a secret. Nobody should know our code. I'm serious now. We shouldn't even know it. Okay, we agree. It should be a smell code. <laughs> <laughs> Lavender means I'm being strangled. <laughs> <laughs> should we stick with what Stacy said? Asked Christy. <clears throat> what did she say? I forget, said Marianne. <laughs> So did she I. said, so did I have you found my red ribbon? I replied quickly. Glad. Oh, sorry. She said, have you found my red ribbon? I replied quickly. Glad to be able to answer something. <laughs> Glad to contribute. But, did not add with that? It's, that's, that's what it says. <clears throat> right, said Christy. And that means that there's some kind of trouble and the babysitter needs the police. I think, I said slowly that we should stick with what Stacy said, but that we should have a few more code words so we can give more information. Yeah, in case, uh, hold on, wrong voice. Yeah, in case there's a burglar listening in on the phone, the person who gets the phone call should answer in code to let the babysitter know her message was understood and that the friend knows where she's sitting and everything, added Stacy. What? How about this for the answer, suggested Mary. Oh, yeah, I, I am not following. <laughs> the person would say, no, the blue one. It's what? simple what? and it's still in code. That's good, said Christy, but I could see her shiver at the very thought of a burglar listening in on her conversation. A fucking chorus, yeah. <laughs> I you, think you we should also never have, have to deal, deal with a burglar. With a burglar. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should also have a way to let someone know whether we're in really big trouble, said Stacy. Like if a burglar is in the house and we've actually seen him, or whether we just think there's trouble. Yeah, I replied. That's important. <laughs> okay, said Christy. How about this? After the person who gets the call for help goes, no, the blue one, the babysitter goes, now I'm in trouble for it. If the, or Now I'm in for it if there's big trouble. Or that's okay if she's not sure there's trouble. Um, wh- well, what are you what? supposed to do if your friend calls and isn't sure they're in trouble? <laughs> what you is the, the action you take? They're going to be like swatting each other's fucking houses. <laughs> <laughs> because there's a raccoon outside. outside. Yeah, because they smell garbage. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, no, no. It's we already know what's gonna happen. It's it's a sleepy small town. One patrol car will come up, shine a flashlight in the window, and be like, "Oh well, nothing to see here." True. <laughs> All right, we agreed because we had no idea what the fuck anyone was talking about anymore. <laughs> yeah. I sure hope I can keep us all straight. I said. Let's practice, Christy suggested. Claudia, let's say you're babysitting for David Michael at my house and you hear a noise with the window. What would you do? I'd call Stacy, I said. Let's hear your conversation. Remember, you don't know where the burglar is or if there's a burglar, so you have to use the code. Okay. Okay, I'd pick up the phone and call Stace. Ring, 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 said Christy, imitating the phone. Stacy placed an imaginary receiver at her ear. Hello? 
You know, you gotta do it like this now. You don't do this anymore. Oh, like this. You gotta yeah. make a palm. Yeah. The palm. Oh, the, pa- the new- yeah, palm. Yeah, the palm. Yeah, it's the a palm. palm. Yeah, that's, that's what I've seen. Now. Oh, right, right. Yeah, that's it's what not kids like a tell. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not like the. They don't know what anymore. this means anymore. They think this means hang ten. Oh or God. They don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> hang ten, ten. <laughs> what if you said hang ten to a bunch of teenagers? They would murder you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Switch to that though. Okay, boomer. They would make fun of you until you would die of embarrassment. Oh my God. That's what I'm gonna start doing now instead of. Right now, I give a peace sign when I cross the street as a thank you. Peace sign. Oh, that's cute. Doing a hang ten. Yeah. Hang ten. <laughs> I'm gonna come hey, already. So what, like, do they hold their phone up and go, "Call me"? No, they don't. Yeah, even, I guess they so. don't call. They text. They don't know what that means to call someone. You know, they just yeah, go like this. Phones aren't for they calling. Just, yeah, I'm gonna no. walk, I'm gonna walk into, into a high school with a boombox. This is like, a banger. Phones are for TikTok. I'm just wiggling my thumbs. Of the listener, or the one listener. I'll try to picture it. Um, anyway. Stacy placed an imaginary receiver at her ear. Hello. Hi, Stace. It's Claude. Did you see my ribbon? No. Have you found my red ribbon? Christy interrupted. Classic no. Christy. No, I haven't. God, Claude, come on, do it right. Don't be such a fucking moron. <laughs> I'm trying. Okay. I'm glad ring, they ring, can't ring. get it either. <laughs> Hello, said Stacy. All right, this was a lot. Hi, who's even speaking? It's I think it's Stacy. Hi. Oh, it's, oh, oh, it's wait, Claudia. No. Hi, it's Claudia. I said my own <laughs> name. How are you? <laughs> Not how are you? cried Christy. Get to the point! You're not making a social call! You're scared to death! <laughs> I sighed. Uh, hi, Stacy. It's me, Claudia. Have you... Have you found my red ribbon? Silence! Because no one could remember what to do. <laughs> They're actually practicing <laughs> talking on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> then Stacy burst out laughing. I forgot what I'm supposed to say. Christy looked ready to kill us. Claude, call Marianne instead. Okay, ring, ring. Hello. Hi, Marianne. It's Claudia. Have you found my red ribbon? That's a normal thing a child says. No, I haven't. No, the blue one, shouted Christy. Marianne. You made up this part of the code. You ought to know it. I know I <laughs> that just... That is fair. I, I, I don't know. Start over, Claude. She started to cry. We practiced a while longer until we had the code. They should have just gone to the cookie store. Pretty well memorable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even so, Christy told us when we each had a copy of the code words... Told, told us that when we each had a copy of the code words... We should read them over once a day to make sure we didn't forget them. To memorize those two oh. sentences. <laughs> yeah. She is so bossy sometimes. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Later, as the girls were getting ready to leave my room, Mary Ann suddenly clapped her hands over her mouth. Oh no! She exclaimed. What is it? I just saw that something. What if my father hears about the phantom caller? You can do the next two. Okay. I bet he won't let me babysit anymore. But we decided we don't have to worry about the phantom caller, I pointed out. I know, but if Dad finds out about our code words, forget it. It'll give him something to worry about. I don't think he's thought of robbers and stuff. I'm sure he fucking has. Only braids. You think about how to do your fucking hair. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe we should keep all this a secret from all our parents. That sounds really smart. Uh Uh-huh. Let's never actually let's never involve the police even. Yeah. Let's take the burglar on ourselves. Oh, it's probably gonna help. What could go? Put on masks oh. and fight crime. <laughs> I am a knight, said, said Claudia. Christy said the stupid thing about their parents. Uh-huh. You know how parents We're the babysitters are. club. Marianne's right. They're big worry warts. Let's just go on as if we never thought of any of these things today. Agreed? Except she wants them to all memorize their fucking flashcards. Pick a lane! Agreed! (laughs) The emergency meeting of the Babysitter's Club was over, but our adventure was just beginning! Uh... Our adventure of getting murdered? (laughs) 
Chapter 4. There he is! There he is! I told myself excitedly. Oh, a Trevor sighting was always a big event. A Trevor sighting. I was With dodging. Sasquatch. Yeah. He was I got my tranquilizer like gun ready. I was dodging through the halls of Stony Brook Middle School, trying to remain a safe distance behind Trevor Sanborn without losing sight of him. It was 8 o'clock. The first bell would ring in exactly two minutes. Trevor came to a sudden stop outside the door of the office of the literary voice. I stopped, too, and someone ran into me from behind. Crash! We fell against some lockers. I turned around. I was face-to-face with Alan Gray. Gross. Watch where you're going, I said. (laughs) I straightened my bow tie with the little Scotty dogs on it Um, and patted my hair to see if any damage had been done. (laughs) Um... That sounds adorable, actually. I would love that. A Scotty dog bow tie? Scotty dog bow tie. I want to know what the rest of her outfit looks like. We used to have, like, Scotty dog shorts or a shirt or something. We had Scotty dog something that was cute as hell. Yeah. Yeah, pajamas. Yeah, it was like a shirt with a big Scotty dog, and then the pants were like little Scotty dogs. We had a lot of matching clothes. Well, you are twins. It's true. Well, we are twins. We still have matching clothes. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I actually have a lot yeah. of matching clothes. With, actually, I I bought this shirt because um, my friend bought it, and it looked so comfortable. And while I was talking to her, I ordered it online. <laughs> and then I think that our I think our other two friends are doing it too because it's super comfortable. You're just like on your yeah, phone, I, like uh huh, uh huh, go on. Yeah, where is it from? <laughs> okay. It could be the comfy click. Yes, comfy, comfy yes. click. We are all my hair is long. The pandemic. The yeah. cozy crew. Yeah, 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 that's good too. Yeah. My hair is long, and I could do lots of things with it. That day, I had fixed it in five slim braids and looped each one up on my head, holding them in place with beaded berets that had sparkly Barrett. streamers Wait, attached. Wait, berets? Okay. Berets. Berets. No, no. Five I berets. berets. <laughs> five tiny berets. Five miniature berets. It already sounds so complicated. I'm trying to, yeah, I'm trying to visualize this. It's not working. It's, I mean, it's basically an art project. And then there's sparkly streamers. Wait. Oh, Excuse God. me. You need to go back to barrettes and... Okay, no, I, I, will, I will rectify it. Okay. All right. My hair is long, and I can do lots of things with it. That Ooh. day, I had fixed it in five slim braids that <clears throat> and looped each one up on my head, holding them in place with beaded barrettes that had sparkly streamers attached to them. Me? What about you? Said Alan as he straightened his books. <laughs> that was not, <laughs> not what I thought, I thought Alan was going to But I'm going with it. It wasn't what I intended either, but it just happened Here that way. Are. Then he stalked off, saying in a soft sing-song voice, Claude and Trevor sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. Oh, he makes me so mad. And how did he know about my crush on Trevor anyway? I've only been talking about it to anyone that'll listen. Someone must have let the cat out of the bag, and I had a good idea who that someone was. Me. (laughs) (laughs) The bell rang then, and I had to run all the way to my homeroom. I sat through the roll call and the morning announcements thinking of Trevor. I had this daydream about us. (laughs) Our grade is being taken on a field trip to visit the Colonial Bradford Mansion in Wutherby. What the fuck? We're split into groups, and Trevor and I are in the same group. After we tour the house, we go out back to the gardens and start wandering through the giant maze made of yew hedges. Trevor and I reach a dead end together and are just about to turn around when we realize it's snowing, even though it's June. Okay, that's that's what it's like in Vermont, right? (laughs) Now it's miserable. (laughs) I think your experience was skewed. Hey, what's that? Says Trevor. (laughs) He points to a little wooden door hidden in the bushes. I don't know. I reply. Let's see. Maybe we can get out of the snow for a while. We open the door and find ourselves in another world. The snow is gone, and so are the maze, the Bradford mansion, and the other kids. What the fuck? This is we're no longer longer in Weatherby. Me too. For for all I know, we're not even on Earth. Maybe we're in the fourth dimension. Um. It doesn't matter. (laughs) It doesn't matter. (laughs) Wherever we are, we're alone together. Claudia. I shook myself awake. Darn. 
just about to come. I have never <laughs> been able to. <laughs> I'm sliding out of my chair. <laughs> that is fucking great. Fuck. Darn. My basement is flooded. Oh my god. I have never been able to finish that daydream. If my teachers would just leave me alone, I could find out what happens. <laughs> Yes, I was in math class. It was the third time that morning that I'd started the dream. <laughs> Damn, Claudia. <laughs> May I Going have your some homework? Changes. <laughs> May I have your homework, please? Our teacher, Mr. Peters, was peering at me with great concern. Most of my teachers look at me that way. <laughs> oh, sure. I got my homework paper out of my notebook and placed it on the pile. I knew it was all correct because Janine had been my helper for my weekend homework, and she was a real stickler for the math problems, as you can probably imagine. Claudia, Claudia, she was always saying with as much concern as my teachers. You're confusing whole numbers with even numbers, you fucking moron. You never played number munchers. <laughs> a whole number. number munchers. Do they even have number munchers? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Number munchers has got to be that old, right? Right? Um, I'll Google it. <laughs> okay. A whole number can be even or odd, just as long as it's a negative or positive integer. Well, that's certainly cleared things up. Why can't Janine just talk to me like a normal person? When we were little, she used to be normal. We would play together and have fun. She even seemed to have a sort of imagination, although that's hard to believe now. Math class ended, and I headed slowly for English. I've been... Dreading English for the last couple of months because of this book we're reading. It's called The Pond. And I'll be honest with you, I just don't get it. I'm not that bright. Real quick note. Uh, whenever uh, a math teacher was frustrated with me, I very cleverly, and like the little asshole I was, would say, like, look, it, it's all Greek to me. Oh. <laughs> such that a, went over well. Such and an, and they an never enjoyed that joke. <laughs> I wonder why. It just made them more frustrated. So this doesn't say specifically, but Number Munchers is the first educational game in the Munchers series. Designed to teach basic math skills, it was popular among American school children in the 80s and 90s. So uh -huh. it was probably around then. Yeah. I love I mean, Number Munchers. Our age. I liked Word Munchers. Uh, I was not a fan of Number Munchers. Remember Lemonade Stand? <gasps> I remember feel like we've talked about this before. Troggles! Oh, Dr. Dr. Quandry's one. Oh, Dr. Quandry's Island was the Island. shit. And, I remember, um, like... Uh, the Incredible oh. Machine. No, we didn't have that. I don't know that one. Mm -mm. We had um, Odell Lake. Odell Lake, <gasps> yes. I was trying to think I about that. that. forgot about that shit. By the way, The Pond, by the way, looks like an awesome fucking book. Uh, this inspiring tale about respecting and, and preserving animal and plant life, <laughs> perhaps even more relevant in today's climate than when it was first published. Oh, wait, are you looking up what the pond, like, actually, it's an actual book? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Wait, is that what she's reading? She has to, yeah, it's called The Pond, and uh, and I'll be honest with you, it's, I just don't get it. <laughs> and heartwarming adventures in and around the pond with his faithful dog Charlie at his side broaden his understanding of his place in the world and awaken in him a prote protective instinct towards all nature. <clears throat> so uh listener and by listener i mean angela um, <laughs> uh, pause the podcast now read all of the pod <laughs> read, read, or the read, rest read, of read this of book pod. or the rest of this book won't make any sense <laughs> it's true um i'll be honest with you i just don't get it and by it i mean the pond it's not that i don't understand the words although that's kind of what it is <laughs> I know all the vocabulary. It's just that I'm not getting much out of it, except that this kid goes squirrel hunting a lot. What? What? I'm the sure the synopsis there's... on Goodreads did not say that. <laughs> I'm sure there's more to the story than that. Some kind of message, but I don't know what it is. Furthermore, which is a big word for me, I don't care. Maybe <laughs> if I didn't try to read it so fast. School is absolutely a complicated mess. Give me Nancy Drew any day. In English, we had to read aloud from the pond. The teacher told me to read with more feeling. 
which if you heard me speak, it's hard for me to do. Why does she have to read with <laughs> feeling? It's not an acting class. <laughs> then she handed back these vocabulary. She's getting her ready for her podcast. <laughs> 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 then she handed back these vocabulary quizzes we'd taken the week before. I got a 70. Not bad, Claudia. Coming from me, Jonathan. That's t- typically what I would get. <laughs> that was not... I, I passed... That was not going to please anybody in my family. It didn't please me. I know that <laughs> I know that you spell October O C T O B E R, but I'd written it O C O B E R. October. October. What? October. Pay attention, it's, Claudia. It's that silent T that always gets you in October. <laughs> I sure love this month, October. <laughs> Quick interjects and uh, uh, saw a great uh, meme today, and it said like it pisses me off that September, October, November, and December aren't the seventh, the tenth months of the year, and whoever came up with it should get stabbed. And the other comment was like, "Well, I have good news for you <laughs> because it's a part of the Julian calendar." No, I know. Uh... <laughs> I was about to be like, I know why. <laughs> That's fucking great. <laughs> I don't super get it. I don't I'm get it. Getting it from uh, Julius Caesar like... came up with our current months, and he got stabbed like a lot. Remember, <sighs> dude, Chris, we all went to public school in Baltimore. <laughs> so did I. Jonathan didn't. I went to Catholic school in Annapolis. He was too busy learning uh, about Jesus. I was too oh. busy not paying attention about Jesus. I I'm pretty read sure something... that um, Greek mytho- Greek Roman civilization was just taught as mythology at that point. <laughs> yeah, no, they don't start until Constantine. Along with the dinosaurs. Yeah. Sorry. I read something sorry that to our, said... Uh, we have any Catholic listeners? I'm sorry at all. <laughs> I read something that said September, October, November, December is the LMNOP of the calendar. <laughs> <laughs> now that I find funny. Thank you. I enjoyed, well, I didn't come up with it. I but. enjoy that. Yeah, but you told it to me. I appreciate that more than Chris's, so. <laughs> I like Chris's You don't Chris's like better. jokes about the Julian calendar? I'm going to go back to this book. October! October! <laughs> October! You sound like a crow or something. October! I feel like I sound like Gilbert Godfrey. October! <laughs> 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 Pay attention, Claudia. So far off the rails. I was very glad to get the cafe- get to the cafeteria for lunch. Stacy, I called. I spotted her ahead of me in the hot lunch line. <laughs> what? There's hot lunch and cold lunch. Wait, what? there's cold lunch. When is there cold lunch? Well, like there's hot. They're like separate things. What? what? No, no, there aren't. There's Read just one the lunch line. line. Just there are different line, lines because there's different foods. Oh my god. So, what fucking fancy school did you go to? No, you went to my fucking school. There was one line. You get pizza, chicken sandwich, crop of french fries. I'm pretty sure there was another line. I think we only got in the hot lunch line because that was the only good one. Well, yeah, one. the hot lunch what line sounds like where it's at. I don't know. So I never got it. Oh, bullshit, bar. Angela. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> we have to we keep going. I know. Bar. This is really good. It's so <laughs> off the rails. Okay. It was I, like a Ruby <laughs> Tuesday salad bar. <laughs> I spotted her ahead of me in the hot lunch line, which is a thing. Save me a seat at our table, okay? The girls' table. One of the two. Table. <laughs> she nodded. She nodded. <laughs> Their table. Like, why would you need to save a seat? Ordinarily, I might have tried to sneak in line with her, but she was standing right next to this kid, Alexander Kurtzman, which already barf, who carries a briefcase and wears a jacket and tie. What? What is he, David (laughs) Michael? Wait, but isn't she wearing a fucking bow tie? (laughs) Didn't he grow up to write Lost? (laughs) Who carries a briefcase and wears a jacket and tie and lives to obey the rules and is also a child lawyer. One of his favorites... Is no frontsies, no backsies. Oh, I'll allow there goes it. The sex life. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, can Fuck. we have hands on every episode? Isn't, yeah. isn't he in charge of Star Trek now, Alex Kurtzman? <laughs> yes. Oh shit, it is Alex Kurtzman. Oh my Wait, god. Really? So there was really no point in trying to butt in. I looked around the cafeteria and saw Christy and Marianne eating with three other girls. What the fuck? That bitch. 
fucking bitch. Lauren Hoffman <gasps> and the Schillaber twins. Oh, no. Mariah and Miranda. Mariah and Miranda. <laughs> Thanks, Mom and well, Dad. Well, Dane and Dwayne. I know. Our twin friends. The Schillaber twins, who you are You have other identical. twin friends? Yes. Dane, Dane has a twin named Dwayne. What? Yeah. I did not know that. What? Sorry. That's not unrelated to this, but yeah. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. Fucking wild. Well, and their names fucking rhyme. It seems like such a nightmare. There's like one Why word. didn't our names rhyme? That would have been cool. Word. That would have been. Well, <laughs> it was hard enough for our parents to get our names right. <laughs> Even with them Rebecca not and Schmabecca or Angela back. and Schmangela. It was, yeah. Angela and Schmangela. Chris, I just want you to know that you and me were on the same page with Schmabecca. <laughs> Rolls right off the tongue. When I have to, when I sync this shit up later, I'm going to find where we both say Schmabecca at the same time. Just make it harmonize. <laughs> <laughs> The but sh- no, Dane and Dwayne are horrible names for twins. Yeah, it just seems like you're inviting trouble in yourself as a parent. The <laughs> Shillaber Shout twins. Shout Dane's parents. <laughs> yeah. They are they delightful. Yeah. They. I bet they I'm are. He is a gentleman. Yeah, his parents are delightful. They're fucking Jamaican and have their cute little Jamaican accents. I love them. They 100% will never listen to this. They will never listen yeah. Uh, I'd love to have him on the show, but he would not be able to read what is on the page. He does. Wait, he can't. He cannot read. <laughs> He's he, incapable he, he of repeating. He, can, he can't is repeat. He Claudia? Things. Yeah. He will like hear a movie quote and then repeat it instantly and get it wrong. The funniest thing in the entire, <laughs> entire, entire world. <laughs> oh my god! Holy shit! And hold on, I have to tell you because you can see me. Oh my god! So we have known this about Dane for so long. He can't. He can't repeat movie. He always gets quotes and lyrics wrong. Like, if he reads something out loud, he just can't do like, it. Like, even the most obvious None thing. None of us thought about this. Like, like and, Die Hard, Welcome to the Party, pal. He'd be yeah. like, it's a great party, everyone. Welcome to the party, friend. Yeah. Like, like just <laughs> None fuck? of us thought about this at all, Ange, until his wedding. When we're at the wedding. When we're at the wedding, I'm standing fucking <gasps> next to like him at the show. altar. And then they... You know, start to give him his vows to repeat, and it, all of us are like, <sighs> literally, everyone in the entire <laughs> wedding audience at the same time was like, "Oh, oh no!" He and <laughs> yeah. Jonathan were having a great time. <laughs> oh my and it was God. like, he can't do it. His other best friend was like performing the Keith, ceremony, yeah. and he had to like keep just making. I'm crying. He was just like making really small chunks for Dane to repeat because it was going badly. Well, and like oh at one my point. God. We're all, it like, was so cute. Everyone, like everyone knows Dane, so everyone's aware of this, and everyone's like laughing at the same time, like, "Oh shit, we didn't think of this." And at one point, Dane just turns to the entire wedding. And he's just like, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, like it's you know, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> like, like, it's the, me, like the Dane, word forever, Dane. he switched to to the end of time. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it's not that he's not eloquent. It's just that he. It's just like. He just, like, translates in his own head. Yeah. yeah. It's like yeah. he's got yeah. an idea of what it, he wants it to be. Oh, my God. It's like God. a particular form of, like, aphasia. Where <laughs> I have just, never was... heard of that. That's fucking wild. It was a beautiful moment uh, on a beautiful day. <laughs> it was amazing. It was oh, awesome. Wow. <laughs> I mean, the person who, like, the guy who, like, I guess JP or whatever, who had, uh, like, was reading, having us do our vows, he would literally say, like, four sentences at a time. <laughs> And I just yeah. remember being so cold. And just, oh, yeah. yeah. I have to pay attention to this. I cannot handle this. Like, wow. <laughs> but I still had to repeat, like, paragraph after paragraph. Yeah, that's as, a as a lot. professional wedding officiant, um, I got three under my belt for the listener, Angela. And, um, <laughs> like, uh, the whole repeating things, a lot of people don't like it. Like no, the, it's they, weird. they'd just rather it be I'd rather just read it off a piece of paper. Yeah. 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 Well, we did like I wanted our vows to be like the super old timey traditional <laughs> ones because I just thought that was cute. <clears throat> and that was pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah, you're so ours, sweet. Ours are it started raining. Yeah. And we're just like, all right, pick it up, pick it up. <laughs> it drizzled. That's good luck. I remember yeah. like our like pick we were this is totally tangential, but trying to figure out what our vows were and he let us pick from a binder. Mm-hmm. And then one of them was um, E.E. E. Cummings. And I was like, I just want to hear you read it out loud. Aw. 
That's awesome. Well, yeah, we... To this, I was like, this is going to be total chaos. I just want to see this happen. <laughs> and, like, that's how I picked what we did for our vows. I was like, <laughs> like, this is going to make people cry. This is going to be chaotic. This is for the Christian people. <laughs> when we were picking what he was going to, like, talk about or read in the ceremony, and, yeah. like, we had a more religious pastor than we normally would have because it was Joe's dad. Yeah. And he's close to us. Oh, right. Um, yeah. So normally we pro- we probably would have had, like, fucking Chris or somebody. Oh, yeah, You know, yeah. we wouldn't have done a pastor. I wasn't pastor, in the but, game then. But that's, that's true. true. But that's so, how he knew he had to get into it. Yeah. So he had us pick, like, the different passages he wanted us to read. And we picked by picking the shortest possible ones. The that shortest were and, like, sure, least yeah. religious. Each, the, sh- the shortest, yeah, and least jesusy ones were the ones we picked for each thing that's how we picked all of our fillers yeah Yeah, it's like what's really short we just want this to be like 10 minutes long yeah Yeah. seriously we gotta throw some jesus in there for somebody (laughs) speaking of getting through it (laughs) (laughs) let's keep reading every goddamn book we're in the home stretch are are. we yeah i think so so the shillaber twins who are identical (laughs) were dressed alike you can be i couldn't believe it they are too old for that i think yeah they are that is, yeah, that would be pretty embarrassing. That's way too old. We were old. We were over this by like third grade. Yeah. They were Quinn. Uh, Quinn. They were twins. I went to high school with whose last name was Quinn. So they were the Quinn twins. Jesus And they were Christ. identical. And they wore. And it didn't help, obviously, that we had a, a um, uniform. Mm-hmm. But even without the uniform, oh. I'm pretty sure they dressed identically. Ew. Ew. Hey, like John. Of uh, speaking of getting through this. <laughs> Go up. Yes. Oh. I wish no. That's that's just it. That's my whole point. I know. Shut up. <laughs> you shut up. I had to talk about the Quinn twins. Go on. <laughs> but then Christy How and are her the Quinn friend... twins. John. <laughs> no, Christy are you still and her friends can be babyish, like my friends right now. They had even brought <laughs> bag lunches that day because the hot lunch was chicken divan. What? Which I admit is, is on the disgusting side. What the fuck is that? Chicken div- How do you spell that? D-I-V-A-N. All right. Get, keep going. I'll look okay. it up. However, it's okay. embarrassing to bring your lunch to school in seventh grade, okay. is it? No, the fuck For it one isn't. thing, it gives your locker a permanent bologna odor. Okay, don't bring bologna. <laughs> That's what peanut butter and jelly is for. I reminded myself that I needed to have a little talk with Miss Christy Thomas. I got my chicken Ooh. divan and sat down with Christy. Pretty soon, we were joined by Dorian Wallingford. Talk about romantic names. Ugh. Emily Bernstein, Howie Johnson. Are any of these people relevant? Pete Black and Rick Chow. <laughs> we were all eating the all chicken demand lunch, and the boys had eight desserts among them. They pack away more food at every meal than a football team does. Chicken demand sounds Are disgusting they on a to football me. team? Okay. Chicken demand. Uh, Chicken Divan gets its signature rich and creamy flavor from a mixture of cheddar cheese, milk, condensed mushroom soup, and sour cream. Oh, God. And there's broccoli in it, too. Stop. Stop. So So it's like chicken, cream of mushroom, cheddar, and broccoli. (laughs) God. And sour cream. Disgusting. Oh, my God. What if you're lactose intolerant? I would even add sour cream to that. Right? Horrifying. It already sounds like a salad. I have not had dinner yet, and I do not want to. Oh no. no. <laughs> um do you guys think they have enough food? I asked as I opened my milk carton and arranged the things on my tray. Isn't she constantly eating? Enough for a food sculpture, right? replied Pete. She's, I'm sorry, it's not I'm sending a picture to Mary. beer barrels and Twizzlers. You're sending a picture of us drinking yeah. <laughs> to your sixteen year old cousin. She has to learn sometime. Great. <laughs> uh, okay. I mean niece, not cousin. Oh my and, god, I forgot that's their niece. Yeah. <clears throat> Uncle Wild. Jonathan. Enough Ew. for a food sculpture, replied Pete. Oh, oh no, Jonathan. not today, I exclaimed with a giggle. <laughs> the guys have been bringing toothpicks to school and using their milk cartons and garbage and stuff to make food creations. Once they made Mrs. Pinelli the music teacher. They gave her noodle hair, grape eyes, <laughs> and an apple head. <laughs> we got yelled at for wasting food. <laughs> <laughs> Dory... Dorian, is that her name? Dorian ignored the boys. She nibbled at her chicken and looked tragic. <laughs> she can be very dramatic sometimes. What is happening? I don't know. <laughs> I don't. We have lost she the thread. Her chicken divan, looking tragic. I would too. 
<laughs> Jesus Christ. What is it? I asked her finally. Dorian sighed loudly. <sighs> <laughs> the boys stopped scarfing up their food and looked at her. We got robbed last night, she said. I Tragically. Dropped my <laughs> I dropped my fork with a clatter clang, and almost clang. choked on a mouthful of carrots. Yeah, yeah. You did? Well, not us exactly. Who exactly? Nana and Grom. <laughs> and it looks like the work of ba -ba -ba, the Phantom ba -ba. Caller. I think my heart actually stopped beating for a few moment, moments. I died. The phantom collar. I squeaked. It's all that sugar. It's all the sugar. It's diabetes. Yeah. Dorian yeah. nodded her head tragically. Wah, wah, wah. Where do your grandparents live? I asked, dreading her answer. In New Hope next to strikes back dorian allowed a tiny bit of chicken to enter her mouth <laughs> i did not add him. that's an actual word i don't want to hear enter her mouth again on this yeah. podcast she let a little bit of trevor no. enter her mouth i let out a sigh of relief so the caller was back in new hope adjacent to strikes back <laughs> next to of the jedi <laughs> Oh, oh my god. Well, <laughs> I said in Sorry. New Hope. The Phantom, the Phantom Caller. Caller. Okay. <laughs> Claudia, what are you talking about? <laughs> he got Nana's sapphire and diamond engagement ring and her diamond choker. I'm sorry, Dor, I said. I didn't mean it's just that, well... It's better than if he was robbing houses here in Stony Brook, isn't it? Dorian gave me a funny look. I guess. Splat! The boys had lost interest in our conversation and had started a food sculpture. Half a banana had just fallen off a tower of milk cartons and landed in Emily's chicken divan. The chicken Disgusting. splattered into her mohair sweater. Oh. Ew, ew! She cried. Rick, look what you did. My sister is going to kill me. Why is your sister going to kill you? He asked. Because this is her sweater. Oh, sorry. Come on, Emily, I said. Let's go to the girls' room. I'll help you wash it off. As I stood in the bathroom, sponging off Emily's front with damp yeah, paper were. towels, <laughs> Emily leaned forward. <laughs> Emily leaned forward and whispered, <clears throat> So, what's this about you and Trevor Sandborn? <gasps> My heart stopped beating again. If that kept up, I wouldn't live to see 13. I really should have a lot Christ. less sugar. Holy I shit. checked in the stalls to... <laughs> I checked in the stalls to make sure we were her alone. Her poor dentist. Uh, no, her rich dentist. <laughs> right, right? Her dentist has like two boats because of her. Oh, that's funny. She only has wooden teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I checked in the stalls to make sure we were alone. <clears throat> Nothing, I said. And what did you hear? That you like him. <gasps> Who'd you hear it from? Dorian. Who'd she hear it from? Emily shrugged. I don't know. <laughs> Well, I know something. I know that Christy Thomas has a big fat mouth. Christy! exclaimed Emily. What does she care about stuff like this? <laughs> you know, she doesn't care about boys. Yeah. Wink, 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 wink. <laughs> <laughs> she wants to be in here to tell us. She about cares. Me. But Emily's <laughs> words made me think that wasn't the kind of thing Christy cared about. But what. <laughs> But was, <laughs> but she was a blabbermouth. I threw away what the paper towels. What is the evidence towels. here? There. Has Chrissy blabbed about shit before? I don't think so. I don't think so. 
maybe before the first book. I don't know. I think it's. I think it chalks up to like uh, precautiousness. Like she's uh, just precautiousness. Just doesn't know any better. There. I said to Emily, I think the spots are gone. Thanks, Claude. As we walked out into the hall, we ran into Christy and Marianne. Thanks for nothing, I said to Christy. What's that supposed to mean? Emily raised an eyebrow at us and disappeared into the cafeteria. You told her about Tourette. I realized I was almost yelling, so I lowered my voice to a whisper. About Trevor. I did not! Chris, Chris, I almost said crispy. Crispy. Chris, Chris, Christy whispered back. That's hard to say. Christy whispered back. I did not. Well, everyone seems to know about us, even Alan Gray. Why would I speak to Alan Gray? Hissed Christy. That's also hard to say. <laughs> I paused. Hissed, Christy. Hissed, Christy. Christy Christy hissed and whispered. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you hissed. Hissed, Christy, all the time (laughs) has come. I would like to Gray. God. I paused. I like Gollum. Beats me. (laughs) Beats me, too. Suddenly, I felt bad. I'm sorry, Christy. I just can't figure out how everyone knows about this. Who else did you sell? Said Marianne. How much longer? Okay. Yeah, we'll just do this. We gotta wrap it up yeah. soon. This is this is a, we'll we'll just do this. Like chapter. a two hour podcast. I know. We're having too much edit, fun. Do you edit this at all? <laughs> no, no. no. Oh God, not. really? <laughs> oh, good. So it's all in here. Yeah. It's all in it's there. It's all in there. Unless one of us cool. says something like very bad about people that we know. Yeah. Then I edit that That's, out. That really That's... was only in that one Valentine's episode. Yeah. That was a nightmare. When you talk shit about me, knowing I'm your only listener. <laughs> no, we, we t- talked <laughs> about all of our exes. All of our exes. But we kept, we oh, called wait. It, we called it Schmalentines, and then we kept saying, like, Schma in front of people's names, thinking yeah. that was a code. Yeah. And that we were very we drunk, were clearly. We were drunk. And the next day we were like... <laughs> <laughs> this is a good work. <laughs> this was like ten years ago. <laughs> it was probably oh god, almost ten years ago. It. All right, let's get oh, through this. Okay. Right. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Just you guys and Stacy. Well, I didn't say anything, and I don't think Stacy would. It's a mystery," said Christy. Yeah. A mystery. It's a Christery. I, I like the sound of that, <laughs> but I still didn't yeah. like everyone like, knowing my private business. <laughs> That was good. Yeah, I love a mystery <laughs> where everybody knows all my private information and yeah. I don't know yeah. fucking why. Mm, a mystery of a boy weird... I have a crush on. <sighs> Go on. I'm sorry, I said again. Look, I'll see you guys at the meeting this afternoon, okay? The Babysitter's Club meets mon- Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 5.30 to 6 o'clock to take phone calls from clients. Okay. Christy and Marianne disappeared into the girls' room. I went back to the cafeteria. Two good things happened that day. The first, of course, had been the Trevor sighting in the morning. So sh- did she talk to him? <laughs> no, or did she, she saw just him. see him from she afar? She stalked okay. him. The second happened just before the final bell rang when Mr. Taylor, the principal, came over the intercom with the afternoon announcements. He reminded us about having our school pictures taken about and uh, and about some club meetings. Then he said, on Friday, October 31st, that's Halloween, kids. Duh. Duh. Our first school dance, the Halloween Hop, will take place. It will be held in the main gymnasium from 4 o'clock until 6 o'clock. Do they have more than one gym? (laughs) You're the fuck? This is Connecticut, not Baltimore. (laughs) Costumes are not required, but they are welcome. We hope to see all of you there. By the way, the dance committee will have a 15-minute meeting in my office right after the last bell. That's all. Good afternoon. Fun chapter. There's not much left. I'll just read this. Just, yeah. Take us home. Take us I home. sighed yeah. dreamily. I... <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Take us home, Chris. Okay. Just, yeah, sure. go for it. I sighed dreamily. You have to shout, you have to shout oh. that whole thing. The Halloween hop. 
Would Trevor go? More important, would he ask me to go? Well, he might, but not if he didn't know who I was. That would be crucial in getting an invitation. I sighed again. The second sigh was hopeless. <sighs> After all, Trevor didn't even know I was alive. Is that it? Mind that drop. it? Bye, 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 bye. Pancakes. Oh my goodness. Pancakes. There's pancakes. Here's, here's her butt. She came to say hi oh. at the very end. Hey. All right. That is the beginning of the book, Claudia and the Phantom Phone Calls, which we barely dealt with any phantom phone calls. Yeah. It's basically yeah, just that been... wasn't scary in any way. Yeah. There weren't any <laughs> phantom phone calls. <laughs> Not yet. They're setting it up. Ugh. I guess. I am... They're really spooked. All right, good. <laughs> um, thanks for thanks for being on this episode. And uh, any any thoughts? Thoughts. Um. Well, I kind of like after this, I want to watch the episode of the show that this book was based on because I love, and you guys should too because I love like her with Trevor. It's fucking cute as hell. I because they actually. We, it sounds creepy in the book, but they actually are really adorable, like, on the show. No spoilers. Aw. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, We're not going to no watch spoilers. it until after we finish the book, but I am excited you know to keep watching Trevor, that show. You know yeah. that Trevor's in this book. Well, I assume. Yeah. Yes. I mean, he hasn't um, spoken, but oh, I hope yeah, she gets closer right. to oh, him sorry, than I just, ruined, like... I ruined everything. No, no. I, I would hope that she <laughs> gets closer to Trevor than just okay, being obsessed. Okay, these books have been out since 1986 so um spoiler you know, right now what fucking happens <laughs> yeah i'm excited to finish so we can watch the episode yeah i i, 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 I really like really really like the first had a read story when this whole, book like, came out so well and i we haven't i was not born when this book yeah came out. <laughs> we haven't scheduled our next uh, couple of readings but i want to fast track it because like this is this seems like a good like it it's taking place right before halloween so yeah. Oh, just, yeah, that's perfect Let's timing. just get it done in October. Yeah. Like, cranky Spooky these... phone calls. Cranky oh. Thursday. Phone calls. <laughs> yeah. I do, I, I do feel Claudia really hard. Like, I love getting dressed up for Halloween, and it super sucks, like, this year that I can't do anything. Yeah. Um, but... You still can. It's just, just for you. It's just for you. It's, just, yeah. it's not for it's, anyone else. I will dress up like Avril Lavigne and sit in my house. <laughs> and eat candy. I will eat... And... I mean, that's just a Wednesday for me. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah. I got candy at Sam's Club, and we've just been eating it, like, yeah. every day. It was a great I did actually decorate decision. my house for Halloween this year, and I don't usually do that, so. Ooh. But I did it, like, September 2nd. So. Yeah. That's we... what we did. It's been, yeah. it's been that kind of year. <laughs> yeah. We decorated the inside of the house in the first weekend of September. Wait, I and think then... we did it, like, honestly, August, like, 30th. Yeah, I don't think we even maybe made it last till, like, weekend September. of August. We were just August. like, yeah. Um, but we just put out the outside decorations last yeah. weekend. I bought a skeleton. But yeah, at anything Target. for like a little bit of serotonin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You Did know? you buy that nine foot skeleton? No, that's what I really want. No, I bought a skeleton <laughs> who that's like it's in the ground. And he's got stakes, so it looks like he's coming out of the ground. It's like little pieces, mm -hmm. so it's like a little skull, and then his arms sticking out, and his arms and his legs. So there's a, there's a skeleton. <laughs> yeah. He's like he's like this. <laughs> like coming out oh of the no yeah. that is alarming <laughs> it's great i love it i bought a skeleton raven and a skeleton kitten it said oh kitten. god kitten yeah Sad. that's just yeah it's creepy oh, it's yeah it's real oh, god. yeah i'll send you pictures later yeah it's super sad <laughs> oh super boy sad. i saw this shit at target i don't holy know holy <laughs> shit i saw someone take a picture a of like a skeleton octopus and they're like this is getting out of hand <laughs> Sorry. They, they don't, don't have bones. They don't have exactly. They don't have bones. How are they not? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Uh, we've gone for quite a while, so let's wrap it up. Thank you so much, and Thank you for, having for being me. on the show. Um, super fun. Maybe we'll have you on again when we do uh, like Sweet Valley. We, yeah, we need to have her on for a Sweet Valley. Yeah. We have to do a twin episode. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I know. So we're definitely doing Sweet Valley number two sometime, and we'll have you back on for that. But yeah, thank you for uh, being on. Is there anything um, that you want listeners to know about or whatever? Plug? I don't know if you care. I don't. I don't have any shit of my own. 
I mean, just like vote and don't be a dumbass. Yeah, like, that's good. That's a good. If you call. don't, yeah. if you for some reason like don't know enough to vote, like fucking learn and <laughs> yeah. then just go out and vote. Like it's not that hard. Like don't be like Claudia. Yeah. <laughs> that's a tale. Educate like, yourself. Don't be like Claudia. That's a very good. Yeah. <laughs> don't be like Claudia. We Educate yourself. Of- and vote. We need to be looking ahead at like a, having a good world to live in for the next like twenty years. The planet yeah. allows us to li- live, so like just figure it out. Vote, be smart, and I don't have anything else to plug. But like, if you guys have shit, so watch yeah. the Pop Socket show. Pop Socket <laughs> show. <laughs> you heard it. it. You heard it from a fan. <laughs> watch Pop Socket Theater at popsuckettheater.com. <laughs> Um, listen to all of our podcasts, uh, cactusrodeo.com slash podcast and read my comics at cactusrodeo.com and follow us on Facebook and Twitter and all that other shit. Just look us up. Look us up. It's not that hard. Um, that's it. You can look up my Twitter too, but it's just, it's just, um, like cat pictures, song lyrics and pictures of cats. Yeah. Yeah. Don't. I like it. Yeah. Cats are good. That's what we need. That's what we need in these trying times. All right. That's it. We'll see you next time for more Claudia and the Phantom Phone Calls. Thanks for listening, and we love you. Bye. Bye. We love you. Below Grade Level is a Cactus Radio production. You can contact us at podcast at cactusrodeo.com. Subscribe and follow on iTunes, Stitcher, and Spotify, and follow Cactus Rodeo on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for more entertainment and updates.